at the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning. Welcome to Bassmaster Live, and this is the final event of the year for the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens, presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. This is the ninth of ninth tournaments. This is the Central Open finale here from one of the legendary places for bass fishing in all the world, Sam Rayburn Reservoir here near Jasper, Brooklyn, Texas. That's some scenes from the takeoff. We're uh, preparing for the takeoff early this morning. Takeoff has not happened yet. Our days are getting shorter, as we all know. But we have 10 anglers remaining on this final day. We started with the field, uh, very typical of opens, a giant field of 188 anglers. And Ronnie Moore, 10 guys out here, and, and some guys who are not fishing today who are also looking with great interest. We've got seven very important positions to award at the end of this day. Yes, Tommy, right there. What's at stake? $43,000 for the winner today. Also, a spot in the Bassmaster Classic. And you mentioned it, those six spots that you can clinch today. We're talking about six qualifying positions for the Elite Series that will be finalized with today's standings and that one classic berth for the winner today. Everyone, whether you missed the cut or made the cut, is going to be focused on Sam Rayburn today. Absolutely. There's our 10 anglers. We'll be out having cameras with each and every one of them live with you all morning long. We certainly look forward to that. And this place is certainly legendary. 114,000 acres at full pool is Lake Sam Rayburn. We are far from that right now. More on that a little bit later. It has been a very, very dry uh, summer into fall here. And that has changed things a bunch, but we have had some fireworks going off uh, during the first two days of this tournament. Again, this is the final day. This is the big, big wrap up for the season. Nothing speaks to the to the hard and difficult nature of fall fishing, Tommy, other than looking at our leader, Logan Latuso, a veteran yes. of the Bassmaster Opens. His father, a former Elite Series pro, knocked out five pounds on day one. That is not what you want. Five pounds on Sam Rayburn does not get it done. But yesterday, 31 pounds and change. One of the biggest bags in the Opens that we have seen hopefully he duplicates the latter rather than the previous one but uh five pounds to 31 you can go here to zero any day here of course we talk about our full field of 10 only separated by about nine pounds logan caught nine pounder and then another nine pounder to start his day yesterday that's how volatile it could be today can't wait to get underway and you were talking about some of those qualifying positions we'll keep an eye on today and we'll break down all those standings as we see some of these guys getting those pre-tournament interviews but logan is one of those guys hey he's in the top spot he would love to make the bassmaster classic but he's also got a floor finish above seventh logan and you're in the bassmaster elite series you will be one of the qualifiers so we have two central opens possible qualifiers fishing today. So not only are we going to keep an eye on the tournament standings, they want to make sure they get just enough points to get their dream come true and make the Elite Series. I cannot count the amount of Oof. scenarios that we have possible today. <laughs> Ronnie, you ran them down for all the folks on yeah. Bassmaster.com earlier in the week. Maybe we'll get a reprise of that updated for today, and it will be complicated, but we're going to do our very best to stay on top of it. The main thing is we're going to see all the fishing today on legendary It's Lake going to be Sam a little Rivers. bit of a three-card money on the guys trying to get into the Elite Series through the center. Central Opens with Bradley Hallman's assured his spot. Logan Latusa, like you said, Ronnie. James Niggemeyer's third. He's one point ahead of fourth place Kyle Norsetter, who is fishing today. Controls his own destiny. Yeah. It's, it's going to be something else as we, uh, again, take a look forward to uh, this great, great playing field that we have for you today. It's many times been uh, considered the top uh, destination in the 100%. country for bass fishing. Uh, multiple times, this massive lake, as we say, 114,000 acres at full pool. The Angelina River heads up just north of Nacogdoches, Texas, moves down through here, and this was impounded. Fairly, it, it's, it's relatively young in terms of TVA and core impoundments here, and that means there's plenty of timber still standing in there. Much of the Angelina National Forest is still uh, in play here under the water there. But uh, 36 miles long, four miles wide, about 750 miles of shoreline. And you said approximately 114,000 acres, but it is about six feet low. Like you said, a dry summer for the south, especially in South Texas. But you mentioned it, a new, relatively young body of water, Tommy, but a rich fishing history in this part of the yeah. country. The techniques developed at Toledo Bend down the street and Sam Rayburn are ones that last throughout fishing history, and we see them still today. Well, good Saturday morning to you. Great to have you with us here on Bassmaster Live, the grand finale for the open season. Very prestigious circuit and, and very, very difficult to, uh, to, to prosper in. The fields are so large and so deep in terms of talent. I'm Tommy Sanders. Uh, welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders with Ronnie Moore and Mike Sukon. And let's talk about the fishing, Ronnie, because it's a different time of year. It's not the bountiful 
uh, spring conditions we have here, this can often be a difficult time of year to catch them. Yeah, and one thing, Tommy, that's for sure about the fall at Sam Rayburn is you're going to see possible guys fishing in inches of water. I mean, right up on the bank, right on those grass lines, fishing top water, fishing some power fishing ways. But we'll also see some anglers fishing way offshore because those fish were just out in deeper water with the summertime, warmer water temperatures. They're still out deep, and with that low water, there's no real reason for them to rush up there yet. They're still hovering around that bait fish, and the bait will soon make its move up shallow. We'll see that with these cooler temperatures, but we did have a warm evening, and we're going to have some warm wind today pushing a good front. Yeah, we're going to have some wind later on, Such, and we got some anglers that are <laughs> sort of up in the air on their future here. But a lot of goals for, for at least seven of our anglers will be achieved today. Yeah, you know, you know what? We got our, our champions going to win like $43,000. We're going to get a classic berth for our champion, and then they're still fighting for those uh, Elite Series spots. And kudos, kudos open and overall open. We got a little bit, or is that set? That's set, isn't it? The overall is set, and that's what, kudos to the guys who have fished all nine of these opens. There's three different divisions, but if you want to get in the overall race, you have to fish all nine. What a gauntlet, and we awarded three guys those spots yesterday, and it, it is a difficult feat to be consistent across the country. Yeah, yeah, that is a, a slog for sure to go through a long, long season like that against this kind of talent in such numbers. But boy, we have had a, a memorable season so far. And if you've been watching a couple Saturdays this fall on Fox Sports 1, we've done a couple of these opens live where we get a kind of a good reach of oh the next gosh. potential superstars of the sport that will make their move up. We've had two very young winners on the Bassmaster Opens on Bassmaster Live. JT Tompkins here at the Upper Chesapeake Bay. Tommy, this was such a fun event to cover and see. He came from ninth place on the final day, had a big bag. It was one of those tournaments where it's kind of like this week. It's been do or die for a lot of anglers. The ability to fall is there and the ability to rise up is right there as well. And 20-year-old JT Tompkins gets to live out a Bassmaster Classic dream suit with a victory in this Upper Chesapeake event a few weeks ago. Yeah, JT really, really, uh, look at that big fish he caught there to, to climb up from ninth place to win. That was the one that sealed the deal. And then we go over to just two weeks ago, Lake Hartwell, South Carolina. What a awesome, awesome venue to have. We've had every tournament level at Bassmaster at this event. And to see Tristan McCormick, he started the day in second place, but it was a pretty big gap from first to second. He said, hey, Ronnie, I love the fall. I love October. It's the month that he won the College Classic bracket last year. He knocks out an opens victory, and we will see him live today as well. So maybe Tristan McCormick would love to see at least four Elite Series events next year in the fall, if possible. I don't know if he's going to get it done. Well, if anybody's got the mojo going, it's Tristan McCormick. He would for love sure. to see that. And he's doing this something very similar to what we saw at Lake Hartwell for spotted bass in Clearwater. He's doing some similar techniques and strategy here at Rayburn this week, but with bigger tackle and bigger bass, obviously, on the forefront of his mind. That was the final event of the Southern Division of the Opens. Of course, they had one at Cherokee Lake up in Tennessee and also started the year at uh, Lake Kissimmee in Florida. Brandon Lester knocking out the, the Elite Series. Man, knocking out a uh, big win there, his first win. And for Tristan here, Tommy, he is one of those anglers that now this is going to be a second classic qualification. He did it from winning the College Series and now an Open. That's two different routes to the Classic. Two very difficult routes, but he knocked it out. Yeah, Tristan McCormick, definitely one of the rising stars of bass fishing. As we say, he'll be in action today. Hi, right, guys. Here we go. Day three, championship Saturday. We're on a beautiful Sam Rayburn. This place is chock full of giants. we got a big ground to make up today to Logan. He caught 31 yesterday. But hey, these fish are in here. We're going to go out swinging, have a fun day. The wind's going to blow. So we're going to try to stay in the boat today. Have a lot of fun. Y'all stay tuned. Hey, 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 guys. Final day of the final Bassmaster Open of the year at Lake Sam Rayburn. Um, we're sitting in ninth, so we got a big hill to climb today. Uh, I'm not going to fish with any pressure at all. I'm just going to go fishing and have a good day. Uh, that's what I've been doing the last two days. And yesterday, I just scrapped everything, ran all new water, and, and caught 15-6 yesterday. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to go out, um, treat it like another day of practice. It, really, your best, your best days of fishing are usually in practice. So I'm just going to treat this like a practice day. Um, run out, run new water all day with a plopper and, and a Terminator buzz bait, and hopefully we get five bites. Yesterday I got seven bites, uh, only landed five of them, so I'm hoping to get five bites to land them all, and hopefully they're big. And uh, we got a big hill to climb, but I think there's a big bag out there to be caught, so hopefully we can catch 25 plus and make a run at the win. 
anxious and excited and ready to go catch them. Um, just sitting here waiting, and anxiety's been through the roof. Today is definitely a big moment. I need to catch them, but no matter what, it's just a blessing to be here, to even make it to be on the live coverage um, and be able to get the shot at uh, going to the elite. So, I mean, we do got to catch them for that, but, you know, it's just we'll see what happens today. Oh, we're gonna go do the same thing again today, you know, starting the day off with two nine pounders and and then having thirty one pounds, you kinda gotta go do it again. So I'm gonna go out there and swing for the fence again and stay deep and hope we can get five bites today. Wind's supposed to blow, so just depends how long we can stay out there and see what we can make happen. Your tournament leader, Logan Latuso, got to be walking on air after day number two with 31 plus pounds. And, and that's what's great. He's from Louisiana. He knows Sam Rayburn pretty well, and he knows that five pounds on day one was not what you want. But when you go and swing on your first bite of the day and it's a nine pounder and you follow it up, like you said, Tommy, with another nine pounder that you know you're on a possible special day at Sam Rayburn. And Logan will have a lead going into today over Kinta Kamira, a guy who's won on the Opens this year, had a great elite season. But a couple of those interviews, it's cool to see Tristan McCormick and Trevor McKinney two yeah. guys who fished the college series and made the classic through that uh, through that avenue and to see this guy Kyle Norsetter he's one of those Midwestern anglers and we've kind of seen a big rise in the Wisconsin and Minnesota anglers making the elite series they've been very formidable but you could feel the weight and the pressure on him today in his interview he knows he's got to move up one spot he's in 10th if he finishes ninth or better he is in the elite series it's a lot knowing you control your own destiny on the last day of the season for a dream come true. Another, yeah, definitely a dream come true. A fantasy day for him for sure. Kyle Norsetter from Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, comes down here to the Central Opens. Now we're talking about Ross Barnett. He goes top 50 there and then eighth place at the Red River. Setting himself up for this. He's put in the work. He's gotten the results. And he said, you know, Arani, I already plan to do well. Uh, no matter what for next year he said I'm, I, I was gonna sign up for all nine opens but I would love to make my registration be nine elite series events and so he's looking to do that today and we got another Wiley veteran Cody oh, Bird Texan. made yeah. the 2021 Recent. classic at uh, Ray Roberts he's a Texas stud he's caught him at every single tournament trail there is and he's caught him uh, in the Bassmaster opens winning an event in 2020 at Neely Henry be interesting to see how Cody Bird does today he's like I'm normally a deep water guy Tommy we're going to see him make a long run, and we're going to see him fish shallow all day. There's Tyler Rivette, I believe, right there. Yeah, yeah that's him. That's day one leader of this event. I'm pumped. And then on a good note like this, can't beat it for sure. I'm ready to go. I think it's going to be a good day. Just the, we got that little feeling in the air today. And there's only 10 of us on this lake. Something's gonna happen. Might not be me, but somebody's gonna catch him. Hopefully it's me. We'll catch him. Only one on our top Gotta 10 do some crazy with four stuff fish today. yesterday. I see the fish every day. Like, they're there. It's a big one. We got a chance for 25, 28 pounds, and we can just get on the bike, dude. They'll follow it to the boat every cast, and it's just that one screw up for one to eat it, and it'll be a game changer for sure, so. We're gonna, uh, Go out there and do what we've been doing and uh, pray to the Lord that it's our day, you know. Racing Louisiana's Tyler Avet already qualified solid in the elites, qualified for the classic as well, but a man who can qualify for the classic this way, he's the hometown favorite, if anyone, Keith Combs. Well, we made it to uh, the final day, and uh, you know, this is Rayburn, this is my home lake, and that's exciting because. I know uh, after fishing here for so long that anything can happen. You know, uh, we saw that yesterday. Uh, Latuso caught a 31 pound bag. He had five pounds the first day, so he jumped in the first. That can happen to anybody in this top 10 because this is Rayburn, and that's just how it's fishing now. You know, you're not able to go out there and catch, you know, all four and five pounders. You got to swing for the fence to catch a couple of those really big ones. And somebody's going to do that today, and they're going to win this thing, you know, and it's going to be unpredictable. So that's exciting. We is exciting. Look at those uh, beautiful clear blue skies. Perfect weather to start the day in the 60s. It'll get up to a little room temperature and a little higher today, but there is a wind factor coming up later. We'll talk about that. There is indeed, and it's crazy. 15 minutes into the show, Tommy, we finally mentioned Keith Combs. We are, <laughs> we are burying the lead. If he is in the top 10 in the state of yeah, Texas, it is point. dangerous. Eight pounds, seven and a half pound lead, uh, deficit to make up, but Combs is one who's shooting for that today in those heavy winds.
Well, there are our cast of players for you right then. Ten anglers who have made it through 180 others, and we'll start it in a moment. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Good Saturday morning to you. It is Bassmaster Live in your Saturday morning. If you're a bass fishing fan, it's about to get a whole lot better, as you can see right now, right on time. Our 10 anglers who have uh, gone through all that tough competition the first two days of this tournament and are remaining on this final day, the 10, going for the win today, going for the qualification, maybe a spot in the Elite Series next year. So much on the line, Ronnie Moore, and so many different scenarios. I, it, it, it's a tangle. And it's not supposed to be easy to make it to the elite. It's not easy to figure out who's even got a chance at it. Yeah, the points race uh, coming into this, there was a couple anglers. To think about this, Tommy, you made two top tens in the first two events. That was David Gaston and Jimmy Washam. Both of them struggled this week at Rayburn. And even though they had two top tens to start the opens for the Central Division, both did not make it. And we had a big fluctuation. Some guys, sixth, eighth, tenth in the points race move up into the top three. Like you said, Logan Latuso uh, and uh, Kyle North that are fighting for their life because Bradley Hallman locked up the top spot in the Central Opens. Logan Latuso is maxed out. He's got about a six point lead over James Nigmeyer, who is third. So that means Logan being the leader can fall all the way to seventh and still get it done. Meanwhile, Kyle North Setter, fourth place in the Opens, can move up uh, by one spot and make his dream come true if he gets in ninth place or more. So Who there are a lot of different, now? I mean, I, I, I might have said on the podcast <laughs> that we're going to see someone fishing today that has a shot to qualify for the Elite Series. I didn't think there'd be two, and I didn't think it would be this uh, crazy of points, but yeah. I think there'd be this make. big a fluctuation of anglers. Sure. I bit pretty good in here yesterday, but it's, it's a late, I'm on a later bite type of deal. And I don't know, I just, I feel like they group up better later on in the day so it's gonna be a waiting game anything i get early is a bonus in my in my opinion so old tyler up here we're probably gonna be here quite a while Couple anglers fishing close to Umphrey Family Pavilion, which mm -hmm. is the takeoff location at the bottom of the Eat lake. It. So they're near the dam. Little sucker. And there's Tyler Rivette. Trist again has already punched his ticket to the classic based on his win in the Southern finale, Lake Hartwell. Another storyline to watch today is there are three anglers fishing in the Open's top 10 today that can help out Elite Series Pro Hunter Shryock, who's sitting at home in Tennessee. You gotta add that in too. Yes, okay, right. Tyler Rivette, Tristan McCormick, and Kenta Kamira, those three anglers who start the we day should add it in, yeah. second, fourth, and seventh in this tournament. If one of them wins, they'll double qualify for the Classic, which means it'll go back to the Elite Series points race, <clears> and Hunter will be sitting at home Probably the happiest day, you know, maybe of his season. Sitting but right home. now he's biting his nails. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, like, there's a lot of bait on the dam, and all I'm doing is chasing bait. And, like, later on in the day, I'll start throwing into groups like 40 and 50 of them. There's a, uh, you can see that ball of bait right there. Later on, there'll be a bunch of them underneath it. And, like, right now in the mornings, there's two right there at 100, or three right there at 100 feet. And they just, I don't know, they don't, they don't really group up in the mornings for some reason. Really don't know why. You would think opposite, really.
both McCormick and Rivette said last night that you know when you see these anglers who often chase bait fish pods looking for for active bass that are schooling on those they do so with forward facing sonar and they do with normally a spinning rod and a drop shot mm -hmm. you know maybe a, a jig head worm that you can put right on the fish's head he said this week it's been a lot of bait fish imitating jerk bait swim bait type of things casting um, with a bait caster instead of dropping directly on fish and that kind of speaks to the fall nature of these fish chasing they're not just hovering under these bait pods they're actually swimming around and moving a lot which also tommy it's hard to relocate these fish each day oh That's absolutely why when they're not grouped up that you just you just see one here one there you don't really know where to key in on yet a lot of anglers from other areas have remarked it's it's really the water's a lot warmer here than it say it is uh, over at Hartwell or, 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 or sure. even further south in South Carolina. And the bait fish aren't really into that deep fall uh, situation themselves yet. So it's, it's, it's well, a challenge. The what's the combination, Ronnie, of difficult fall fishing and the water being six feet low? Well, that's the one, you know, if the water was higher, Such, we'd see a lot of anglers up shallow. Right. There'd be a lot more cover, a lot more water, you know, available to these anglers up shallow. But with it being lower, it's just those fish are going to be on that next structure. And so some of these guys are fishing those brush piles or like we saw at uh, Hartwell, some of these fish are just relating on really small bait. Mm -hmm. the, the bait that probably hatched earlier this year in yeah. April and May during the shad spawn. So the fish, the bait fish are really small. They're really grouped up big. And so like maybe it's the sun penetration. Tristan's saying, why not in the morning? Maybe it's the sun penetration. It's not a cool evening. Most of these nights, uh, the last few days have been in the 30s and 40s, which is unseasonably cold yeah. for Texas in the south, but one of y'all bite it. Someone's going to get on an early bite this morning that's that's looking at bait fish, whether it's Cranford, Rivette, McCormick. Or Kenta Kimura. Hats off to Kenta Kimura. 12 years fishing the open series. Solidly in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Great season this Great year, year, 17th place. So. He's a He's an opens bet if, if anyone is in this group. Here. He did his job and double qualified. He would triple qualify for the classic. Yeah, he the won a James River. Yeah, he won an open this year and from the elite points. Yeah. Austin Cranford hooked up. I don't even think he'll keep. That's the 14 inches this week. <clears throat> Ain't gonna make it. You gotta catch like three or four of these before you catch a keeper. Cranford for Moore, Oklahoma. Finished 21st on the Red River, the most recent central event. I got a stat for you both we didn't talk about. Logan Latusa is 31 pounds, four ounces, Ranks third all time in opens history. For biggest bags. Biggest bags. Single wow. day bags. Single day. Wow. Whitney Stevens, 32 12, 2019 Harris Chain. We got Toho Will Evans, 31 15. And so he's right there ahead of AJ Slagona on Toho in 2015, 31 2. He's got 31 4. Can you, wow. Did you think we'd see a nine, close to 10 pounder? He caught a 9 13 yesterday, our Phoenix Boats. Big bass, Logan Latusha did. Then he caught a 911 on his next fish. I, I wouldn't. I wasn't. I wasn't shocked. I was shocked to see someone bag. catch. I was shocked to see someone catch two nine pounders. But yeah. I figured someone <laughs> would. You know, we'd see two in the whole field. But now this guy, you know, decided to do both in his single bag. But that's what can happen. He said, "I'm only catching sometimes one fish off a brush pile. But if it's a nine pounder, yeah. I'll I'll be fine with that." He averaged four pounds. His other three fish too. Yeah. That's a feat. McCormick hooked up. It's a start. Quit, 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 quit. Stop, stop. 
That's the only thing, these fish are real skinny, but we just gotta put it in front of the right ones. That's a good one though. Way better start than I had yesterday. Little bonus bite. There we go, baby. We're gonna have some fun today. Playing with house money, isn't he, Tommy? Absolutely, man. This guy has got the momentum going. That's the last thing <laughs> any of the, the other nine don't know he caught that. Maybe Rivette does, but other than, that's the last person you want to catch one early and get momentum rolling is Tristan. He's been hot the last few events. A couple of our guys have already gotten wins this year on the Opens Series. Tristan, one of them, really got it rolling here and got his start going today. So we got plenty more on the way. These 10 anglers just getting started here on Sam Rayburn Reservoir and the St. Croix Bassmaster Open, the final event of the Central Opens Division. We'll be right back. The biggest sporting event on the planet returns to Fox Sports, and for the first time ever, it's taking over the holiday season. The FIFA World Cup begins November 20th on Fox and FS1. Well, interest in the Bassmaster Opens has taken over Bassmaster Live today. The last stand for the Opens this year. Nine events across the country. This is the last of them, the final in the Central Open Division. Legendary Lake Sam Rayburn here on the Angelina River in the Piney Woods of East Texas. Legendary for fishing. And we have seen some incredible performances so far over the first two days of this three-day event. Ten anglers left on this final day. And that's the way they lay out as it stands right now. It's kind of one of those things, Tommy. Do you want to be the guy who's been pretty consistent or has had some decent weights like Kenta Kamira with 15 and a half and 18 and a half? Or do you want to have a guy like Logan Latusa <laughs> where the possibility of 31 pounds exists? It's kind of a happy medium. Which one do you want? I definitely would want the consistency, but man. 31 pounds gives you a good advantage over the rest of the field. Man, two fish bigger than his day one bag <laughs> of 513. Kyle Norsetter. Great performance for the Wisconsin native here in the Central Opens this year. Got the weight of the fishing world and the weight of the point standings on his shoulders. Boy. He is the one who controls his destiny today. If he moves up one spot, like we said, to ninth place at the end of today, if we need to. he will tie James Nigmeyer in the points and have the tiebreaker for the final elite spot. Oh, that's phenomenal. Go from Kyle Norsetter further down the lake. You're saying how volatile it was, Ronnie. Bradley Hallman's gonna win the Centrals. He started sixth, Nigmeyer was eighth, Norsetter was ninth, and, and Logan was 11th. 11th. Yeah. What's That's a pretty big climb. What's even crazier, yes, the points every day are unofficial, Tommy, but 11th for Logan Latuso coming into the event, about 30 points from qualification. Him finishing 107th after day one, he was way out of contention, down in the 20s in points, ends up catching enough weight to take the lead, gains all those points back. And like, not, like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Don't, for, don't think about day one. <laughs> nothing happened. I'm here. I'm still here. 513 to 31-4. And without the 513 on day one, he'd still be fourth place going into today with just yesterday's weight. Unbelievable. 29-year-old, been fishing the Open since 2014. Oh. Oh, crush it. Good season on the Centrals for Logan, 21st, Ross Barnett, solid 37th, top 40 on the Red River. Boy, it'd be a big day for him if he won, got the classic berth, and got inside the elite qualification. 
boy. Let's wrap up three big things today. I think his dad, Robbie Latuso, didn't feel too hot yesterday and left uh, to go home. But he may end up driving that truck right back to yeah. Sam Rayburn to see to see something happen today for him. Actually, the year Robbie qualified for the Elite Series, when Robbie got fifth in the points, Logan, his son, got sixth, just uh, eight points away from his dad's mark. I asked Ro uh, Logan that. I said, man, you've been close a couple times to qualifying for the Elite Series and been the first guy out or been the second, third guy out. He said to do it this week and to knock it out today or tomorrow, talking about, you know, fishing today, what would it mean to you? And he said, man, I feel like I'm much better than I was, even though I had those great finishes. He said, I'm more prepared. I'm older. He said, if I would have qualified back then, it would have been great. But I don't know if I'd have the longstanding ability that I could possibly have now uh, with what he's learned in those few years of coming up close. He had three fish on day one, Ronnie, five pounds, 13 ounces. Said he couldn't figure out the grass or they just weren't biting as well, so he went deep yesterday and caught the 31 pound, four ounce bag. Brush piles. That's what a lot of these guys had to, had to figure out. You know, some of, the, some of the guys spent half of their day and they'd have one fish at noon and have to make an adjustment to, to go either shallow or to go deep. We mentioned it, Logan. 2015 or 2016 came up close to qualifying. He also did so in 2019. Got beat out by Bob Downey. Bob Downey, almost oh, really? an elite champion. Oh, yeah, that was that okay. was the year that the Central Opens qualifiers were Wes Logan, John Cox, Caleb Kufal, Taku Ito, and Bob Downey. <laughs> Four of those, actually all five of them are Bassmaster winners. Three of them are on the Elite Series as champions. So it's a pretty good group to get beat out by. Some, some tough company you got to run with out here. <laughs> Hayden Newberry, our first look at the angler from Jonesboro, Illinois, there in the bottom right. 18-3 on day one, man, a great day one. Hayden said he had a lot of looks at weigh-in when he weighed in 18 pounds because Newberry is a very popular last name in the Sam Rayburn region. Dickie Newberry, one of the best anglers that fishes this lake. And I called him and even asked, I said, it says you're from Illinois, but are you if any relation to Dickie Newberry? He said, no, but I think Sam Rayburn was nice to me because of my last name. And so <laughs> Hayden making the top 10 in third today. He's a traveling nurse kind of relocated over the last couple months to different places and currently resides in South Georgia. He puts a lot of miles down, that's for sure. Started uh, on the, the first uh, Southern Open, Kissimmee, and yep. finished well, 22nd place to start his year. It's been mixed results since then, but uh, what a way to wrap up your year, make it to the top 10. Yeah, 100th place finish or 120th place finish, kind of, goes away in your mind if you win one and make the classic. So that's yeah. what he was hoping to do today. That's the miracle cure. Sam Rayburn is a historic fishery. It's number six on the best uh, Bassmaster top 100 lakes. Number six. Of this, all time. Yeah, all yeah, time. Yeah. And this is our record 35th visit, Bass's 35th visit to Sam Rayburn. Ten more than second place Gunnersville. Rayburn was coming online about the time the Bassmasters were coming online, around 1970. Rayburn and Toledo Bend were the hottest of the hot spots in the country.
Take off down near the dam, the bottom of the lake there. A lot of action in that area. Let's get back over to Illinois. Trevor McKinney. He was one of the guys who had a great offshore pattern going in practice. Yesterday, he had about one fish at noon and said, I got to can this and pulled up to a stretch up shallow and caught five keepers pretty quickly. That's weird. Maybe a keeper. Ain't very big. I can maybe measure. I can hold it on thing. I don't believe it. Him right on top of the back. Trevor's been super solid throughout this tournament so far. 13 9 on day one, 15 6 yesterday to make it into the 10. He might have been the saddest angler I talked to on the phone yesterday. I said, Trevor, you made the final day. What's the deal? And he said, Man, I got a top 10 at Ross Barnett. And then I get a top 10 at Sam Rayburn. And if I just did not finish 138th at the Red River, I would be in the elites. He said, all I needed was like a 60th place finish at Red River, not 138th. So uh, third place and uh, another top 10 for two of the three opens, pretty good. But you cannot slip up in the opens, not even a day. Oh, man, and it's so easy to do. The fields are so huge. And I mean, it's just so easy to get behind the curve and just not be able to get over the hump. Congrats to all these guys who have made it this far on this final day, showing us something. But the, the big catching has yet to light up, but we figure that is coming very, very soon. We'll be back in just a moment with more Bassmaster Live. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Ten anglers qualified to fish today at the end of the road. The St. Croix Bassmaster opens. This is the Central Open third and final event of the year. Lake Sam Rayburn, what a legendary place. As Suits just pointed out, the 35th or 36th 35th. Major, major Bassmaster event to be held. More than any other body of water in these here United States. And that's uh, that's for good reason. Always ranked very, very high. And rarely have we seen it this dry. Oh my Normally God, there's no. water right there where it's supposed to be, but it's six feet low. Keith Combs, who lives here and breathes Sam Rayburn, said, uh, He's only seen it this low this time of the year, like twice, and that was there almost a decade ago. Definitely different sort of conditions and in a time of year that's kind of hard to figure out even <laughs> under the most normal circumstances. Well, he took off with it. I thought he might be somebody. I think there's a good chance to catch a good one here this time of morning. Put them on the small side. dangerous when Keith Combs is catching him on a worm or a jig or something on Rayburn and not a crankbait because mm -hmm. we know he's going to pull that crankbait out at some point. He said he was mixing in a couple dragon presentations. They need him to grow spot. up. And Keith can punch his ticket to the classic. Had a couple of struggling seasons back to back here and Making the classic has been tough for him, but uh, it's been like man, oh man, first man out like three or four times, it's, and then this year yeah. he, he got a shot going in the final elite, you know, what? winning in, and he got I think third place there. 
He's always dangerous on Sam Rayburn down here, though. We yeah. know that. He's won other events here recently. Always in the yeah. top ten. With our leader, Logan Latuso. Even with some of the other catchers anglers have had, Logan's still in the lead. That is one. Whoa, that's what I don't want to do, get a hook in me. Well, we didn't zero. That's a good thing. Nice. Nice one to start with. Good job, dude. First bite on the crankbait all week. for Logan Latuso. Not the size no, that he saw on day two, <laughs> but you got a four pound lead roughly Ouch. over second. You got an even bigger over third in the rest of the field. You just, just get your limit and Old then we'll serve. go from there. Yeah. yeah. Back to Tyler Rabat. That's one. Caper. Oh. Not bad at all. <sighs> On the one. I don't even think it was two pounds. It's they're skinny, man. Which makes no get our sense big bag on day one. Here. He figured they'd be. Only one of only two anglers to break 20 pounds on day one of this event, like you said, Suchi was the leader, 20 pounds, 14 ounces. And, and a big six pound, 13 ounce big bass. It was second to Kyle Austin, 7-12 on the day, I think. Right down the way along this giant earthen dam is Tristan McCormick. You can see the bait fish right there on kind of the the right quarter of the screen, bait fish with a couple harder, bigger marks below it. Or a fish, obviously, nope. and oh. just lost that one. Little spotty potty. Start to see that though, Tommy, about 45 minutes into really the fishing day. Super glue. 30 minutes or so into the fishing day for these guys. Mine's dried up. Light switch happens and mm -hmm. each guy starts catching one. We see them catching them shallow or deep. It's just kind of that sun at, at times in the fall, once it gets to a certain level in the sky, the angle that it produces starts to starts to really happen for some of these guys. Back to oh, Hayden yeah. Newberry. I was up in uh, Minnesota and they had I Just skate him in. Yeah. Oh, it actually, might be 14. Kind of a. Oh. 14. Yeah. Oh gosh. One of the big ones out here, right? <laughs> At least we got on the board early. Was that some vegetation over there, Ronnie? He pulled that out of the shoreline. Yeah, there's going to there's gonna be places where there's matted vegetation, some just under the surface grass, and then there'll be, there'll be some stumps and different things up for those guys shallow, even with it being low. Look at the group of fish behind his bait. Oh, 
choked him. Gotta be fourteen. Fatty. Looking pretty deep. Let's go back up the lake in the direction of Keith Combs. We just saw him catch one moments ago. A lot to learn in the boat with this guy on this body of water, for sure. Gotta be a big one in there. Too many nice ones. Spitting up shad. McCormick. Can happen in a hurry with what Rivette and McCormick are doing for sure. some fun today. See that look how skinny them fish are. Nineteen pounds on day one for Tristan McCormick, so yeah, it can happen and can happen big for we him. We were today. just getting warmed up, Tommy. We just yeah. wanted to, you know, we weren't we're not saving these from the morning. These we're are all ourselves out. Just, before, I mean yeah. it is Absolutely incredible for someone. If you're watching Fox Sports One this morning, you, you do not know bass fishing. The there are windows of opportunity where the entire lake, no matter yeah. how deep you're fishing, how shallow, it fish fires right up. We're seeing that right now. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Maybe not. He'll keep, I think. And number one. They were real. So, so most of them are, we're in about 20 foot of water here. And, uh, most of them are about 10 foot down, but those ones are about two foot below the surface, so those are the ones you want.
Man, old skinny dude there. And a bigger head on that one. Looks a little bit better. I need to take him to dinner and he's eating where I've been eating. <laughs> he ain't got nothing on him. <laughs> All mouth. You can see him making up a seven pound, seven ounce deficit, can't you, Randy? Oh, no Tommy? doubt about it. He's <laughs> caught plenty seven sevens uh, at Rayburn at some point in his yeah, life. He's, so. he's done that once or twice. He's, he's been around the block a few times here. East Texas, great Keith Combs, one of the winningest Texas anglers of all time. He's seen him put three in the boat so far, but Logan Latuso hanging on there. We saw him put his first keeper in about 10 minutes ago. This kind of, it really seems remnant of Lake Hartwell, not just because Tristan McCormick's doing the same techniques, but being behind Tommy and now making up the gap, and he's just about a pound and 11 ounces behind. We'll see when we come back if Tristan can overtake Logan Latuso. Take a look at that shoreline at legendary Lake Sam Rayburn, St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open. You see all that pondweed, hydrilla, coontail that is not in the water anymore because the water is far, far down. It's been an extraordinarily dry end of summer into the fall here in this part of the country. We are coming off some cooler to our coolest temperatures of the year earlier in the week, but they are moderated. We'll be up in the 80s today with some wind uh, making its appearance here in a couple of hours, but uh, we'll worry about that when it gets here. Get back out. On the water, Tristan McCormick I started to catch him fairly steady there. He and Tyler Rabette both work in the dam area. You see the one leave the graph, leave the school of fish when Tristan hooked up with it. Got to go. They are choking this thing. Stop, stop, please, just stop. Gosh, my. Could get interesting. Could get interesting indeed. I think it, he went to a commercial break in second place, and I believe he is going to be our unofficial leader there, Such. You are correct, Ronnie. He is taking the lead with that fish. The only one with four fish today, so far. A lot of bouncing back and forth between McCormick and Combs because McCormick and Combs are catching him steady right now. It's one of those deals, well, pick your poison. Do you want to be around a lot of fish where you're going to get a lot of bites, but you might be topped out at 15 pounds? Are you going to be around fewer bites and maybe a chance at 25 to 30? Finding that good mix is something that Combs could definitely mix in today. Oh, a dramatic hook set for all that, huh? <laughs> it's 15 inches. And my spot is blown for life. That's five, right? Got four layers. Another Texas angler from Granbury, Texas, Cody Bird, veteran competitive bass fishing at the highest level. Also used to do a little rodeo, and I don't know if he yeah. still does or not. It's cool that he made the classic in Ray Roberts right down the road from the mm -hmm. stockyards. Cody's been punching thick grass. Me, start. Way up the lake. But he turned 60 years old in July. See, Such, I told him on the phone he didn't look a day over 51, so you just told everyone on Fox how old he is. I mean, <laughs> did you get what approval? You I mean, he's a tough bird. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with him. Hey, I'm gonna fish back.
doing something different in a far different region of the lake than a lot of the field. Going, yeah, you, know, you either got to get away from people or you got to fish a good spot with a lot of people around. And he has, he has gotten away from some people this week. He's got to be 40 minutes at least from the takeoff. A good long run to start your day. Back to Austin Cranford. Oh my God, those, those are all three pounders. Oh, begging. Or not, but it's a keeper. He's barely hooked. Don't you do it. Andy, come on. Exactly what happened yesterday. They hit it, and they get the back hook. They try to kill it. They're not trying to eat it. Good thing they're all still right here. Cranford said that there's been some fish he's been able to see on his graph come up behind the bait, and if they miss it, they'll they'll get in front of it and eat it from the front of the bait, what? and they'll land them. But those fish that just come up and bite it immediately and get the back hook, he'll lose those more times than not. So he said, I said, well, I guess prayers for you that they miss it the first time today, and, and that one obviously didn't. He loses that one at the boat. bit bigger than that little. They're kind of scrawny in here. He's making a few ounces, huh? Got about 11 got? pounds. I think he has taken the lead. Keith Combs is leading. These guys have worked so hard to make it into the top 10 here and fish on the final day, but to see you're up against one of the legends of Texas bass fishing, well, it'll throw, throw a little fear into you, and with good reason, Keith Combs on top will be right back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good hard notes competition going on right now, Texas bass fishing. In the fall on legendary Lake Sam Rayburn. Doesn't get much better than this. This is the final day of the Central Opens. Three of them during the course of this season. In one of three different divisions for the Opens. The St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. And this is the last day of school for the Opens competitors this year. 40 minutes. And I had a limit, but they were... I had a big one and a nice one and... Three small ones. And then I went and caught... You know, went up shallow and caught five keepers. Okay, let's go ahead and make that move. I don't think the big one's sitting here, so we'll cut across. I got a spot that owes me a big one. Combs about to make a move right now. Come here, fishing <laughs> with a little good karma, Keith Combs. Oh, yeah, Keith Combs. Uh, well, I've caught a handful here. They're actually oh, starting to act a little right. I didn't, I didn't really think that it'd fire off this quick, but thrown in two schools and caught ten or fifteen already. So got four keepers. We're just gonna keep plugging away.
Earlier this month, Keith Combs held the Keith Combs Sam Rayburn Slam fishing tournament he's had for six years now. This year he included the Cast for Kids Foundation, which is uh, executive director is uh, oh, Jay Yellis, Yellis yeah. and they put disabled and disadvantaged kids on the water to fish. Some good work being done there for sure. Tristan McCormick, who has uh, won the highest achievement as an individual angler you can get in the world of college bass fishing, has uh, certainly firmed up his presence in the world of professional fishing with his last outing. In the Southern Opens on Lake Hartwell, legendary Lake Hartwell in South Carolina, coming from second place. Tristan said, hey, I love fishing all kinds of styles, but I grew up being a former college angler just last year, graduating from Bethel University. I grew up in the technology age. I grew up in this electronics game. So he said, I have to use them to the full benefit of my capabilities. And that's how he made it to the final day today at Rayburn. And that's how he was in position to be able to win the Lake Hartwell event uh, just a few weeks ago. In the year before punching his classic ticket at Hartwell, he had punched his, his classic ticket through the college series. Yeah, on the Coosa right. Winning the head-to-head -head match, match. Did it in dramatic fashion there, Such, as well. It came back from about a 10 and a half pound yeah. lead and ended up winning by a couple ounces over Tucker Smith. You know, Tristan McCormick, full-time on the Opens. He got the whole deal with the college classic bracket champion. You get to go to the classic. You get to represent the college series through our Opens division, which is this semi-pro tournament series for Bassmaster mm -hmm. yeah. in hopes of qualifying for other classics or the Elite Series. And the Elite Series not in his draft this year, but a classic berth is, and he could double qualify today. I think you can catch big ones doing this. I mean, I'd, I'd think, but I mean, I ain't got nothing else. So that's what I'm comfortable with doing. That's what I'm gonna do. I really can't believe I'm competing out here doing this on Sam Rayburn. Old Sam's not what she usually is right now. Me and Ronnie was talking last night, you know, it's like there's a lot of two and three pounders in here now, and like you're missing that five to six pounders, which is weird. Golly, he did it again. Oh, a spot, that's, or a white bass. Wrong species. Yeah, there's not like them, I don't know, the average, like years ago when I was here, there's a bunch of fours and fives, like, if you had 20 pounds, you didn't have crap. I don't know, weird. They're skinny too, which I have no idea why. There's so much bait, you can just look and see it all. You can't see that bait ball right there perfectly. A couple things, I asked Keith Combs that exact question that would attribute to it, because Kenta Kamira also said it kind of feels like Florida. You catch a real giant fish, one over seven pounds. You maybe don't have any fours and fives to go with it, and you have a bunch of two and a half to threes that pair with it. And I asked Combs that, and he said, well, in the fall, obviously these fish haven't quite fed up yet, which means we'll see Sam Raber in the next week or two explode with how much bait, the cooling temperatures, the fish on the move, we'll see it explode, and the fishing will get great at Sam Raber over the next few weeks. But also, because the water's low, the bait are spread out over deep water, these fish are all kind of spread out. Those fours yeah. and fives aren't grouped up. You'll find them chasing bait way over the abyss of 80 feet yeah. of water, and you'll see them up shallow. So fish are real spread out this time of the year, and they'll start to congregate over the next week or two. The warmer water's not helping at this no, point either. Not, yeah. But these cool evenings are definitely, yeah. it, it stunts them at first. It's like the first two days of a cold front down south kind of harm it, and then it begins to really help it over yeah. the next few days. The Kimura 15-17 on day one and 18-6 on day number two. Big day yesterday. 
said Sam Rayburn reminds him of Lake Biwa in Japan, a lake that he grew up fishing and knows real well. Obviously, he said, you know, on the phone multiple times last night, I'm 40. I've been at this game for a long time, especially in the United States, about, a, you know, a decade years, and a half. Yeah, 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 on the Elite Series and, and in the Opens. So Kenta says he's learning a lot about these lakes, but when he comes to Sam Rayburn, he's able to throw. We've seen him with big baits, mm -hmm. you know, Pickwick, big spoon, big glide bait. He loves throwing a big crankbait, things like that. And so he said he feels ho at home at Sam Rayburn, whereas maybe other Japanese anglers, like he said Masayuki Matsushita, who won here in 2020, also grew up, you know, in that same region fishing Lake Biwa. But some of these other Japanese anglers who come over, they fish different lakes or they fish little creeks. They don't they fish really heavily pressured small bodies of water, which makes their finesse tactics the best of the best. They have sharp to on do that, that yeah. to catch them. That explains a lot. He said, but at Lake Biowa, it's big fish almost exclusively. And so I have to throw big baits to separate myself. And I said, that's very interesting. That, that makes sense why guys like Taku Ito, really good at finesse techniques. He said, be on the lookout for Kyoya Fujita, who just qualified from the Northern Open. He's going to be, he's 25, one of the youngest Japanese anglers to qualify. Yeah. Kyle Norsetter with two fish. Got another. He swung it towards me. Not good. Keep him out. Oh, he's a littler guy. But he should keep. Oh, yeah. Boy, one, number five. Catch rate is starting to pick up here and, and uh, this guy sustain itself it. for a while. Yeah, Kyle Norsetter needing everything he can put in the boat. All of these guys needing everything they can get early because we know that the big ones, the game changers, live here at Rayburn. There's never been any doubt about that. What fireworks lie ahead for us? We will find out soon enough. Start Saturday strong with big noon Saturday on Fox as Heisman front runner C.J. Stroud leads number two Ohio State's offensive assault against Iowa today on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Getting a strong fishing start to our Saturday too here today. I was going to say we're talking about heavyweight football competitions there with Ohio State. Rayburn is kind of on that par. There kind of stands alone in the state of Texas at times as being one of the best. Absolutely. It has been for years and will be for years to come. We've got a strong field of 10 out there on this final day of fishing in the Central Opens. A couple of Texans in the mix. We've got Japanese angler, Illinois anglers, Louisiana represented, lots of states. Wisconsin in the group as well. But uh, back out to our Texas angler, Texas legend, Keith Combs. He's leading on bass track. We had another legend leading yesterday at one point, Larry Nixon. Yes. The general yeah. led the event making yesterday, his, finished 21st. Making his comeback to, to BASS this week. Keith Combs after a move. Good feedback there. Not what I thought. We'll start King's structure jig. Smoked him. I don't think he could. If he does, it's so close it don't matter. Dang, man. This is, like I said, I thought this was gonna be, <laughs> it's got big fish written all over it. I got that bite. That's the first bite I've had here this week. Not a big one though. Ronnie, what did Larry Nixon say on stage yesterday? Well, you know, 
he's been at the game a long time. He's a classic champion. He's fished bass for, I think he said, 25 classics and fished 29 <laughs> years in BASS. I'm like, oh, oh, uh oh. And it started taking off. I'm like, that's him. That's the man. But he had taken, you know, six to ten years off and fished other tournament trails. But he came back to fish Rayburn to end this season and said yesterday he'd like to retire a BASS angler. So that means maybe mm. more opens in the future and other bass tournaments. So good to see the general back. Anytime, you, anytime you have a nickname that's been around <laughs> for probably 30, 30 years, years yeah. then, you know, it says something about your reputation. Hey, he's got 14 he was BASS first, wins, right? He was the first bass millionaire. millionaire. Yes, yeah. sir. He's fifth all time on wins. 14 wins. What if he made 14 wins in the past 10 years? My goodness, the amount of money. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would have made. Still done quite well. Back to Kyle Norsetter. I like Larry Nixon. He photobombed me. I was taking a shot of the lake at uh, oh, TTBC a event, one. and he, he oh, jumped yeah. in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, funny. it's a big one. Oh, it's. It's a big one. I'm coming back there. I'm coming back there. Oh. oh, yes! We got that big one, baby. We got him. That's probably a four pounder, maybe more. Figure the rest out later. Man, I'm a chew. That's what we needed right there. Two more of them. I'm stoked, bro. Whew. Let me know when. We are over the four pound mark for that one, Tommy. I think yeah, that's, that's I, definitely I, I think heavy four, or maybe a five pounder. And if that's the case, that puts him from 10th place up to right at the lead. Yeah. It'll be right there, just a couple just ounces short Keith of Keith Combs. Combs. Yeah. And Keith. today, for we set the scene this morning, Kyle Norsetter started the day in 10th, needed to finish ninth or better to make the Bassmaster Elite Series. And that fish right there, the other, he had three for six at the other point. I think he realized that they're running. That That's fish what right there is, is a huge mark going towards uh, making the Elite Series for him. Continuing the onslaught of Wisconsin anglers on the Bassmaster <laughs> Elite Series. They've been the, they've had a high profile in recent years, to be sure. story on the upper Midwest guys really making their mark in BASS. Start with Seth Fire, Angler of the Year. Sure. Big Newberry hooked up. Big one. Nope, not a big one. Just in the grass. Man, that one felt huge when he had like a clump eye drill on him. days you really need that seven pounder so you can actually have like over 10 pounds. Oh. Let's get back up to Keith Combs after a move. He just caught a keeper there. And Ronnie, how is it possible? These guys never want to say they, I, I don't want to fish history. How can he fish here and not fish history? Oh, he said on the phone, Tommy, he said, I, I, heck with that. I'm fishing history, nothing but it tomorrow. <laughs> I got nothing, so, I got nothing else but yeah, history. Yeah, Combs said, I'm going to fish nothing but history. I want to catch 30 pounds, and it's been up and down fishing on the lake, so I'm going to just fish where I know I've caught big ones in the past. He's and caught today, so many he here. has caught so oh. many fish today as well. Hmm. That's what might be here for us. Spot's been over with me. There you go. That's how you want to meet in that jig right there. Mm. 
Yeah. I like it. And I got him. That dude has got an owner hook in it, man, and it gets some. Um... Oh, he wasn't going to come off. Nice call. Here you go. Yeah. Well, we got a good one, not a big one, but that'll look good with a couple big ones, you know. Uh, like I said, this is a spot I found it like five days ago. Didn't know it was really, really was here, and uh, found it in the evening. Couldn't get bit off of it. Been coming to it every day. Never could get bit off of it, but we're here a little bit earlier today and we've got two bites and a nice one. That's not much history. That's the kind of place you catch a six. Or an eight. Or even a nine. Tristan McCormick. Oh, come on, them are not little, Jake. I don't think. Last fish was a two pound cull for Combs. He's got 13 pounds on the day. McCormick's about two and a half behind him. Not counting this fish. Chris has been utilizing the swim bait all morning, but he told me on the phone last night he would be mixing a jigging spoon and a flutter spoon. For viewers at home, a jigging spoon is normally a three inch, you know, much smaller mm -hmm. one, dropping vertically on fish. Flutter spoon, you can cast out there a little bit bigger, you know, five inches. Six inches at times, maybe. maybe oh, that was bigger, pretty, huh? I mean, look at the huge gap, Tommy, with Combs having about a seven to eight pound deficit behind Logan Latuso. And you think yeah. that's a huge deficit to make up, but. If Logan did slip, which he's had five and 31 over the first two days, so someone days. said, what's he going to catch? And I he's said, I don't know, something in between that. There's a big universe there in between those two numbers. <laughs> the difference in second and the rest of the field was much tighter. 33-13 for Kenta Kamira, only a four-pound, three-ounce lead over seventh, which was Keith Combs. So Combs doesn't need to make up seven or eight pounds on people. He just needs to make up four pounds and change on, on everyone else, and he'll be right there unless Logan does his job, which we've seen already with a keeper, but... Well, after a little bit of a slow start, just out of the first hour of fishing into the That's second hour right now, things cool. really starting to heat up. The guy's catching them steady, and then all of a sudden, we get some good ones showing up here. Keith Combs makes a move. Very satisfied with the results, especially that one, putting him on top of approximately 13 pounds. And here we go, Hayden Newberry. We'll be right back. Four pounder, maybe more. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, and by Rapala. Ten anglers out there who've made a mighty commitment to the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens for this year. This is the final stop for the Central Opens, of which there are three in each division. We're on magnificent Sam Rayburn Reservoir here in the Piney Woods of East Texas right now. You want to catch up on what's happening here? Keith Combs, uh, one of the biggest names from this part of the country in fishing, on top ahead of Tristan McCormick and Kyle Norseth, whom I misidentified. 
I apologize to oh, Kyle. He's, it was exciting. When we he had finds a big out, he'll call you. Fish. Don't you worry. What's that? I said when he finds out you did that, he's going to call you for oh, sure. I'm prepared. No problem, I'm Kyle. prepared to offer my humblest apologies. No problem. We'll get to see Kyle Norsetter I, yeah. a lot next year. I think we will. Being a projected rookie yes. on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Boy, these, we saw him catch the fish that may have done the deed. Hey, when you know you have to at least move up a spot, this is the kind of morning you want to have. You want to catch that uh, kicker, that four to five pounder. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. I told you, Bubba. This place owed me. I've been hitting it every day. Later in the day. And we might have our timing right now. We just need a couple more big ones like that. We just need a couple more big ones, dude. That's that's all we need. Good fish. Let's see what we got over here. Just gonna throw him back. Yeah. Or, or something. I think that's about another two pound call. Last call was about two Only pounds. Only when he clocked it, he wanted no infant. Tommy, I told you coming into today, this just felt like a Keith Combs victory coming, you know, coming from back to back. I don't remember back. you saying that at all, right? <laughs> well, well, he didn't budge. That's, that's, uh, that's a revelation to me that you actually said that and didn't ever say it. We could have a game changer right here, but he's a good one. We'll take him. I'm telling you, man, this place has got major potential. Sometimes. Sometimes you just know, like you, you fish a lake enough. And like I said, I was out here graphing. It was late in the evening and I found this. And I'm like, God, that's it. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. And I couldn't get bit on it. Came back to us the next day, midday, couldn't get bit. And finally, the last day of practice, I came in here about 930 and I got one, and he smoked it, Goom! and it was a five pounder. Um, and I was like, okay. But then I, you know, I wasn't sure enough about it to go start on it. I thought I had better stuff, so I've just, and we get, you know, the opens have such a big field, you can, you can get a late start, man. And it's, it's, it seemed like it just throws your game off. Today we got out here right at the crack of dawn and should have probably started here. But, you know, hey, we can get it. We can get three more biggins off here or two more biggins off here and have all day to go try to crank up a nine or 10, we'll be okay. not idle talk from Keith Combs. He's cranked up nines or tens on this body of water plenty of times before. Started early, as he said today. Crack of well, dawn, got off, out there. Up. Started putting his limit in the boat. Nothing big early. Combs is dangerous, though, Tommy. When you see someone on their home body of water, a place that he has so much history on, a place that he just knows. It's one of those things. You look in Keith Combs' eye on every other body in, bo body of water in the world, and he has a look of determination. Here, it's a, just a different Man. level. For him to catch as many fish as he did off of this spot this morning, got his limit, got comfortable, made a color or two, had just okay weight. It allowed him the opportunity. Now, I can go to some places that I expect mm. only big fish, maybe a bite or two, and right start there. to rotate it. He yeah. catches a good one he was pleased with and said, I wouldn't mind pairing that with some bigger ones. And boy, did the next fish yeah. that he caught yeah. 
make up a lot of that yeah. gap for him, and he's going to be one to watch for the rest of today now that he's in the unofficial lead. Well, he has become the story today, coming all the way up to the top of that leaderboard. And, of course, with a win, he can punch his ticket to the Bassmaster Classic, something that's evaded him the last couple of years. And just all kinds of good things can accrue from a day like this for Keith Combs. We're talking about that when he finished third at the Mississippi River in the last of elite event that had a classic berth on the line. That he still got this? a shot at Rayburn and a good shot. Oh, he's, 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 he was running at me the whole time. Hit real close to the boat and came at me. He'll call, I believe. Tommy, the most hmm. fish that I've seen or heard from people in our top 10 that say, yeah, I caught 30 fish today, about 12 or 13 were keepers. We have seen at least 12 at keepers least. come from Combs today. It seems every single one of them is just that baseline two mm -hmm. pounder, and he's got a couple that are definitely over that. 15 pounds on the day on Bass Track before this last fish for Keith Combs. And a half as it stands now for second place Tristan McCormick, and that one comes Three off. Three pounder. He's the only other angler with a limit besides Combs. He's got ten and a half pounds. He's still a little bit more than three pounds behind Combs. Like you said, Ronnie, McCormick was only two pounds ahead of Combs' day two weight. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, I love what Tristan's doing. It's a great way to catch a lot of fish. It's a great way to catch some of those tougher fish that are suspended. They they just chill over deep water and, and not actively feed at times, and, and you can trick them then. But man, what it just seems like when you get to South Texas, if you're not throwing a, a big bait or a big jig or a big profile lure on a, on a piece of brush or a hard spot offshore like Keith Combs is, you're just not fishing, you know, like this is, it seems like an old school way. Combs is looking around, not, not looking at his graphs, just knowing that the spot exists mm -hmm. out there and is able to catch them without forward phasing sonar. It just seems like you're going to get bigger bites at times. Combs put 15 pounds in the boat in the first hour and a half of fishing. That's a, that's a solid start to his day. Day two leader Logan Latusa still on one fish. He's more than six and a half pounds behind Combs and now. And he'll, he'll need to now. He, he's well aware of his situation as well, but Latusa now needs to not worry about it, but we didn't think with such a big lead that seventh would be in question, but he needs to at least yeah. finish in the top seven if he wants to stay in the Elite Series or qualify for the make Elite it Series. Too, yeah. Yeah. So if he falls eighth, he's outside of the anglers who would qualify seventh, right now. Yes, I believe seventh, he ties. James Nygmire and has the tiebreaker. Eighth, he would tie Kyle Norsetter if Kyle did not move up from 10. Kyle's looking like he's moving up and already. Kyle, with so Kyle's gonna move up, and so Kyle will most likely finish second in the points race. Bradley Holman's in first, yes. winning the Centrals. And then we got the- So uh, there's a couple three scenarios. Carmani of those next three guys. I said the scenarios it could be, it could be Holman, Hallman, Latuso, Nigmeyer, Hallman, Latuso, Norsetter, or the improbable Hallman, Norsetter, Nigmeyer. That could be the possibility as well. And James is sitting at home or on his way home, <laughs> yeah. hoping for the latter. I was just thinking our guys watching from home, him and Hunter Shryock are not happy campers right now. <laughs> Keith Combs potentially. Take a lead. He just hey, called another 12 you know, ounces. Everybody Keith needs Combs. a little bit of a break. Combs has been the first man of the classic two or three of the last four years. So uh, that's right. Maybe this is Combs' break, like you said. That's this lake owes me something, and so well, yeah. he's he's making his breaks happen for sure. <laughs> and this is a place where Keith Combs is notorious for doing just that. Just the master of uh, Lake Sam Rayburn, doing what he does. And 
Fishing on instinct, fishing some history. Yeah, that's good when you get results like that. We'll be right back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Hey there, anglers. I'm Fox Weather's Craig Herrera, and here's the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open, and we're taking a look at weather out on the Sam Rayburn Reservoir in Jasper, Texas. Our pros can expect some highs into the mid-80s, a nice mix of sun and clouds, low humidity, but we are going to have a stiff breeze right about 15 miles per hour. So our fishermen are gonna have to pay attention to where they cast their lines. We hope everyone has a great day and catches some hogs. And remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Many thanks, Craig Herrera from Fox Weather. Telling us uh, how nice it is out there. And it, it is, I mean, it's super dry and gonna get up to 84, but it won't <laughs> feel humid or anything like that, but the wind will blow. Yeah, I will say Craig was correct when he said a stiff wind. Yeah. A photographer Dalton Tumblin's out on the water right oh. now trying his best, and he said it took him about 35 to 40 minutes to get about six to eight miles because Rayburn in places with all the timber, like you said, most of oh the Angelina gosh. forest, you know, is, yeah. is flooded. There's some places you cannot run a straight beeline where you want to go, so you have to kind of fight the waves at times, and sometimes that means you Get a little wet on your way to your spot. So Dalton's trying to run around and cover some of the top 10 today. We appreciate all the photographers who do make all the takeoffs, weigh-ins, and yeah, keep absolutely. us informed on the water. And, and, and like everyone, they gotta you gotta be on your on your toes when you run a place like this or Toledo Bend when it's windy and oh, the water's down. All those factors come together to make it a little bit hazardous. You gotta just take it a little slower. Combs has climbed up from seventh place into the lead over the course of the first hour well, and a half fun. of fishing here. I know that. I get to do what I love. And yesterday, I, like I said, I had to shoot into the grass. And catch, I'm glad I did because I wouldn't be here today if I didn't, you know, spend 40 minutes in a grass patch catching, you know, two, two and a half pound fish. Don't regret that at all, but I hate to do it because I feel like Man, you got so few chances to win a, a, a tournament that you'd be proud to win. You know, you only get so many times to come to your lake at, or your home lake, I should say, at a time when, you know, your patterns that you like to fish when they work. So I feel like, man, I just, I don't want to be up here fishing this way. I want to be out there trying to be, you know, be the hero, catch, catch eight pounders, do that kind of stuff. but. You can't always do it, especially in the fall. The bite's too tough. I'm gonna try something that I do occasionally. Um, we're just gonna move around to a different angle on this same spot. Just to see if we can't trick one. Throw his famous chartreuse and blueback. Mm -hmm. Strike King 6XD probably sold more of those with his performances than anybody else. Texas to Texas here. Keith Combs over to Cody Bird. I saw Cody at the uh, Bassmaster Classic 2021. Yeah, he hey, won Ray 2020 Roberts. at Neely Henry. Mm -hmm. Had an opens win to get to the Classic. Change colors on them, they start biting. And see, you get them little spurts when they, when they're biting. You got to take advantage, man. That guy, a loner got him, didn't it? Cody, 
Cody Bird's one of the guys that, you know, we've seen some guys and anglers have talked about fishing the grass and they maybe throw a swim jig or a chatterbait or something around the grass. But Cody going as far north and west on Sam Rayburn this week, he has found some mats to punch. So he's punching through grass with a three quarter ounce weight, maybe an ounce weight in some places, but he said three quarters been key for him. He said he's been using a lot of dark colors like black and blue, June bug, things like that early in the morning when it's lower light conditions. As that sun gets up, he may make an adjustment, not weight wise, but he'll make an adjustment color to more of like a green pumpkin, more of a, uh, you know, uh, more natural color mm -hmm. that's kind of blends in with maybe a bluegill or other kind of bait fish in that grass. Cody's been solid here, 15-4 and 14 on day one, 14-4 yesterday. A great start to his Central Opens with a top 12 finish at Ross Barnett over in Mississippi. He said he had to take a second look at the standings because he almost packed up his truck and headed home, thinking there's no shot that 14 pounds a day was going to have him fishing today at Sam Rayburn. And he said, man, it not only had me fishing, it had me in the top six. He said, I'm, I'm not even down at the bottom of it. So Cody Bird in the hunt. So this was his only way of knowing how to catch a big fish this week. He said, I want to be offshore. We saw him at Ray Roberts when a lot of people weren't offshore. He was. Yeah. And he said, I wanted to be offshore at Rayburn. I just could not, I could not get on some fish to myself. And also I could not get around enough bites to feel comfortable. Yeah, he finished 19th in the classic. He came in one of the heavy local favorites. We so. had him on camera yeah. the final day. That was, that was his only slip up day. You know, we caught fish where we started. But like I said, how could I do that? I haven't even caught one here in the tournament, and I don't have any history on this place. But I do think it's only an early morning hole. So there's no um, wood cover or anything here. It's just it's just a drop. So it's you know something they can gravitate towards in the morning. They're not going to hold on it very long, and they're certainly not going to hold on it when a boat comes around and stays too long because it's just wide open water. You're just joining us, Keith Combs making a charge from seventh place. He has about almost 16 pounds today. And not only does that put him in the unofficial lead over the rest of the field, but he has now a three pound, five ounce lead over second, almost the six pound lead over third. And then our day one, day two leader, Logan Latuso, is in fourth place, 6'10 behind with only one fish so far. That's surprising, kind of surprising. I. It, I called Logan after the points were kind of finalized yesterday and said, hey, just a heads up, you need to finish seventh or better, just so you are aware, because he knew it was going to be close. And I said, I just wanted you to know exactly what you need. And he said, well, it doesn't make me feel too comfortable. I wish it was, I didn't have to finish anywhere in the top 10. I would be fine because what are you I don't know if I can get a bite tomorrow. That's what he said. That's what he said. A lot of people asking online, where is, how much is he going to catch today? And I said, I don't know, somewhere between five and 31 pounds, because it's kind of a little bit of a gap there, Tommy. Got we'll take a look at our, our unofficial results here. Keith Combs said it early. He said, I think I might be getting my timing down here. We're just in time for the final day. Certainly looks that way so far, as you mentioned, coming from seventh all the way to first in the first hour and a half of fishing is Keith Combs. And looking good right now. Kristen McCormick, very solid. Kyle Norsetter having a big day, very important day. For the young angler from Wisconsin. We got more to come from Lake, Lake Rayburn. We'll be right back. The biggest sporting event on the planet returns to Fox Sports, and for the first time ever, it's taking over the holiday season. The FIFA World Cup begins November 20th on Fox and FS1. Such who you got in that? <laughs> oh, well, you want to pick chalk like Brazil right here? Yeah. 
I mean, you could. Maybe England. You could, yeah, you could England, go. The USA's little... got to get past England in their group. Yeah. No. Tall order, for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, you got uh, nine guys to get past today if you want to win this one, the final event of the Central Opens, the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Opens for this season of 2022. Keith Combs, definitely the local favorite, is the man on top right now. Near to a three and a half pound lead over ahead of Tristan McCormick, who's already won in the Opens this year. In the Southern Division over on Lake Hartwell, as we take a look at massive Lake Sam Rayburn and how our anglers are spread out. You kind of get to this point of the lake, they call this, you know, the, the Caney and Black Forest region, the mid-lake portion, right in between both ramps. The ramp right there at the top of the lake at the bridge, and then also the ramp that we're at this week, Umphreys Pavilion mm -hmm. down by the dam. Kind of splits it in between two, but like you said, Cody Bird making a run up here. It's about 40 minutes just to get up to this area, and then he's got to obviously navigate farther back into some places, but this is tricky. It's also probably been crossed out by a lot of anglers with oh, it being yeah. six feet low. Man, it's been okay. It's not near what I thought it'd be at Rayburn, but it kind of played in my hands with the lower weights and being a tough bite. Uh, I'm actually like fishing like you would in Florida. And uh, not many people's doing that, so they probably miss these. This is a popular area here. Instead of most of the time when you're here at Rayburn, fishing grass you're fishing out on the fringe and uh i'm actually catching them in the mats like in fishing in florida and seminole places like that i love to fish like this too i did want to say one thing uh this is uh skeeter boats 75th anniversary i know they're a premier sponsor of bass and uh i've been with them a third of that time so i've been with skeeter a long time man it's been a good ride i just want to Wish them a happy anniversary. Seventy-five years. And we got two right now. It's, it's That's been a long time. It's impressive. It's been about like it has. It's just I've missed several. They're not. They're not getting the bait real good. They'll bite it real light and let go before you can set the hook or not even have it real good, maybe biting the weight. They're bad about biting these big weights. I'm using three quarters and an ounce to get through this stuff and may have to go a little heavier later when the wind gets up, it compacts that grass and makes it harder to get through. It's been a good little stretch right here for me. It's a, I think it's all about the current and the bait. The wind current blows through here, through these islands and you can see there's a lot of bait in here and. Uh, these fish kind of stack up along the edge. It's pretty shallow, maybe four or five foot max, six foot places where I'm catching them. There's little stretches in here that they turn on during the day for a little bit and you need to be on those stretches when they turn on. You get four or five bites real quick. It can get tough. I hit one of those while ago and caught one and missed a couple. I probably missed more than I've caught this morning. I heard from a lot of anglers running on day one, so they came here with every intention of fishing mats, and they just couldn't get it to work for them. Yeah, the grass bite has been a little bit different. And, and Tyler Rivette was one. He said, I didn't plan to fish at the dam. This is not my style that you'd see me fishing. He said, when it gets cold, that first cold front in the south normally pulls a lot of fish to grass mats because the grass holds heat. It allows them to congregate. It gives them some cover to get by, especially if they're not going to be active. But it's a different kind of cold front. It's not It's not a 40 degree water yeah, type of front. It is going from 70 to mid 60 funny. degree, you know, still very active fish. Well, new, new berry. Looks like it's find out. That is not a white, or a catfish. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, channel cat, or, uh, I don't know. Channel cat, yeah, some kind of catfish. I'm not, I'm not a necessarily great with my catfish species. The nice one though. I knew that it felt awfully weird. Oh, you're good. I just... 
We came out of commercial break, Tommy, with a drone shot of Hayden Newberry. I could tell because of his green power poles, but over top of Hayden Newberry there, you could see exactly what he was fishing because the dark, dark silhouette under the water was a grass, uh, a patch of underwater grass Submerged. that he was sitting right off of casting towards. And so some of these grass lines, that's why Cody Bird, when he's punching mats, there may be a turn in the creek channel where the, the mat follows it and on those points, you know, where it goes in or if there's timber in it, there's gonna be a key areas on those grass that these guys are keying in on. And so if Hayden can keep the same cast and, and catch a bass, he could probably catch multiple there. And they're vying for about $43,000 to win in the birth to the classic. I'm gonna set some early classic odds. Set them, odds maker. How many fish will be caught from the goalposts that were dumped into the Tennessee <laughs> River from the Tennessee victory over Alabama? That's a good and, one. Uh, we got two nice fish. We got a limit. And um, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I think if we got a, uh, I think we got a, a, a good chance to catch a couple more quality fish today. We got six hours to do it. So, uh, I enjoy these kind of days here because there's no pressure to make no cut. <laughs> you're just fishing, you know, and you're we're in a position where we're not trying to fill a limit out. We're going to target. Hopefully, we're going to target three big bites. But uh, I, I mean, I think we got the, the daylight to catch a couple. If they're big ones, we'll move way up. Um, so I'm trying to stay out. I'm going to stay out on places where I've caught consistent, you know, five plus pounders over the year, run a lot of history. Um, that's my game plan. Stay with that crankbait jig, big worm. It's my confidence. And, um, see where it, see where it goes down. But, uh, we got a good breeze blowing. I think it could get up a little later in the day, make it a little bit tough, but but that's okay, man. We got a big boat, so we're good. Ronnie, he's got time to go fish history. Don't yeah, worry. see, I'm telling you, I just I was letting you know I'm not lying. Okay, so I think I'd have a chance if I caught 20. Um, there's no guarantee. I might get 30 and loose, but you know, legitimately, if you could catch 20 pounds. Uh, you know, a couple guys that are way up there, but they've had they've had some big fish, huge fish to get them there. There's no guarantee they're going to go out and get one of those kinds today, um, or even catch a limit. We, we, if you look at the weights, they are going all over the place. The big fish are the are the wild card here at Rayburn. Um, we don't have. I haven't caught a big one. You know, I caught a six, so well, five and three quarter maybe or so yesterday but uh not a true game changer i ain't caught one of those yet and i feel like i'm fishing for them so I'm do I'm do keith combs kind of touching on the math of uh, pathways to notch a victory here would mean a lot to him obviously well, the low water has uh, done a couple things to me. I mean, it's it's made it very difficult to get around in a lot of areas that I that I frequent. Um, you know, so I may have a spot that I want to fish for only 10 minutes, but if it takes 10 minutes to get to it and 10 minutes to get back out of there, and you know, you got four or five of those places, you really slow yourself down, which is not what you need to be doing when the bite's tough. Um, that's one of the main things, it's just navigation. And it doesn't really matter how well you know this place, it's, it's, it's very dangerous at this level. So that's one of the, the main factors. It's also made some of the water colors uh, on the upper end of the lake. You know, there's, there's less water up there. When the wind blows, it gets more stain to it. Uh, we're seeing that go on. That makes the fish not want to eat. 
but uh, I believe we wore out our welcome on this spot, so we're gonna go ahead and make a move. Always thinking about the next patch of green grass that he's technically gonna make a move towards and hope for greener pastures, because hey, if his first two spots, he's worn out his welcome, he's done well though. He's caught plenty of fish and good size off of both of those. Yeah, his timing seems to be right on the money and let's see if this next move is timed perfectly as well for Keith Combs in the lead, three and a half pounds, a little less than three and a half pounds ahead of Tristan McCormick and Kyle Norsetter as it stands right now. We'll be right back. the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Well, the state of Texas, and for our purposes today, the Piney Woods of East Texas are in the spotlight, certainly one of the epicenters for bass fishing. And in the entire world, you got the Lake Fork on the Sabine system. We've got Toledo Bend on the Sabine a little farther down. And here on the Angelina River, the amazing Sam Rayburn Reservoir, 35th big time Bassmaster Tournament being held here today, final day of the St. Croix Bassmaster opens. Now, don't we have, we have a, a stop on our Elite Series next year at the Sabine River, a place we've been before. Right, right. It flows out of Toledo Bend into the Sabine River. Right. And doesn't the Angelina also flow down and connect? We saw, I think sure. we saw Lula Angelina, the Natchez, they all, yeah. they all come together yep. right around where we'll be next year, down there in Orange, Texas, for sure. I think Lee Livesey made a big gamble to go fish in the Angelina. He did last he did. year. Yeah, it didn't pay a, off, but he, a, I think he did make a run to do that. That's about an hour run to do that. Of course, guys running even farther all the way to basically NASA over there <laughs> yeah. in Houston. Four totally opposite approaches to fishing. You got two guys fishing offshore at the top of your screen, Keith Combs and Tristan McCormick. One fishing by the dam for fish schooling on bait. Keith Combs yep. fishing structure. Now we have Kyle Norsetter fishing grass lines with a chatterbait while Cody Bird is punching. Yeah. <sighs> and there's our limit, baby. Not the biggest fish, but it's a limit. Little pressure off now. See if one of those four pounders is still here. It's a ton of bait around this area, even though it's dirty. Cal Norsetter having a dream tournament here to enables him to live the dream on the Bassmaster Elite Series. If everything works out, he's putting the work in and gotten the results he needed so far today. So good for Kyle. Yes, indeed. And next year we'll see just as big of a dogfight. I had people texting saying this year was hard, but next year is going to be even harder with the, or the EQ, the change with the EQ qualification. We have that right now with the opens overall, but that is right. just one way of qualifying through the opens. We have 12 spots available next year. You can't just fish one single division and make the Elite Series. You can still make the Classic, but you'll have to fish all nine, and we're going to see a tight, tight points race oh in, that, in that battle. Slow day for Kenta Kimura so far. said when he won the open at the James River now he wants to win every event like he said he's just got to get the next one got to get the next <laughs> one it's hey, like they want to win every one of these uh, English wants to win but when you win one man you really want to keep winning them they had a great elite season I think they made seven of the nine oh, cuts there. went from a couple 60, top tens went from 69th in points last year to the top 16 or 17 this year yeah huge jump oh he came off
these small ones in the boat for Austin Cranford. He's somebody doing something a little different than everyone else fishing in that farthest east and mm. you know those two arms over there on that side of Sam River. <laughs> Joining us, they have to be 14 inches in length, these large mouth, in order to measure. That's he might have a chance, I doubt I it though. Oh. Ain't gonna make it. That's the story of how this week has been. It's either a six pounder or one of those. Pretty consistent, 16 pounds, three ounces on day one. One ounce shy of 15 pounds yesterday. I ran out. It's always deceiving when someone, Tommy, has 16 pounds and they're, they're all three pounders. They're all that beefy one on there. 16 pounds and one of them is a seven pounder. Six that's, or seven, yeah. You know, it's the same ending weight, but which one do you feel more comfortable with? And that's what Keith Combs was saying. Yes. The guys who caught a big one. Sure. Very hard to duplicate the big, but if you're getting a lot of two and a half to three and a half pound bites, your floor is much so more guaranteed. Slow and steady can win the race. Yesterday, just fishing new water, and they were stacked on it, but it was later in the day and the wind was blowing a little bit harder, and they're just, they're not on the timber, they're just roaming around here right now. This is all flooded timber in here, and there's a couple brush piles, and there's hydrilla all in these drains in here. I told myself I wasn't gonna flip hydrilla, but there's not any boats on the water, so. I, I went in there on the first day to flip hydrilla and uh, it's got 12 foot of water on it but there was boats in there so I just flipped for about 30 minutes and got out of there. Texas does have a pretty big game today, football, college football against Oklahoma State. Ranked 11th and Texas is 20th, so you never know if the state's all up in arms. Going to the game. Yeah. I'm getting ready to watch the game. Why don't you Among text, all the other teams why don't there. you text new elite qualifier Bradley Hallman and say, go Pokes, go <laughs> Cowboys, see what he says. Uh -huh. I think he's split the other way. Now, what were you saying about the Tennessee? Yeah, the goal uh, post. The, 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 the yeah, last classic. week, Tennessee oh, yeah. oh, beat okay. Alabama, and I believe they got the goal post down, which was well, a, yeah. or, or threw them in the river, right? Threw them in the river. Yeah, right I heard now. they threw the Tennessee well, uh, river, right where we fish. It may be off limits, though. Two more minutes, I want to go back to where we caught those two good fish and uh, see if we can't get another one out of there. We rested it for a minute. I feel like they were on to us. They quit biting. Um, after that, it's we're just going to be running random junk after that, trying to produce a big big fish um, we're in a good position better than I've been any day I'm saying if somebody else says it retrieved the goal posts our Let's anglers are going to see it and maybe yeah, catch a fish off this spot well, on the way the back fines they're going to give them for doing for do it they're going to have to retrieve those goal posts because they can't afford to Oh, they can't pay full of $100,000 because of the giant fine. fines they levied on them. Yeah. 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 Kind of a put your money where your mouth is thing yeah. now after all the talking Tennessee volunteers, right. you know. <laughs> but no, Such, the odds are they're not going to catch a fish on them <laughs> because normally that time of year the water's low and then floods will come through in March. So if those goalposts are still there, they will be down the river if TWR it is not removed. But I guarantee they removed them. I thought people would uh, saw them up and take a little artifact home, a little memento home with the goal post, not throw the whole yeah, thing in the river. Absolutely. Well, Keith Combs talking about what a perfect situation he's in right now. Doesn't have all those usual concerns, and he's got a good limit in the boat, and he is 
at work at a place he knows very, very well. All eyes on Keith Combs. He's our lead story right now as it stands. We've got a lot more fishing to come from Lake Sam Rayburn. Don't go away. Start Saturday strong with big noon Saturday on Fox's Heisman front runner C.J. Stroud leads number two Ohio State's offensive assault against Iowa today on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Well, our front runner in the offensive assault here on the final yeah. day of this tournament, mm. St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open, last open of the year, final day, and Texas fishing legend Keith Combs is the man on top right now and has been for a good long while now having a having a good day this place sets up for him and he's taking advantage it's like Keith Combs is Ohio State and you invited <laughs> yeah. all these anglers to come fish in the horseshoe and that's, that's his home territory it's, it's not a place you want to be competing against him one to one on one good analogy A lot of fishing left. It left. It could uh, end up being as close as the co-angler division yesterday. Decided by three ounces, Ronnie. Rondell Joseph beats Jordan Lane. And then uh, Corey Weaver of Iowa wins the co-angler of the year. Congratulations to all those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gets entry to one pro division in the Opens think, yet next year. I think Jordan Lane, if that's the same Jordan Lane that I know of, he used to live in Alabama. He's won before and done well in the Kaiser Co Angler and then uh, he just recently moved to Texas a few years ago I think lives near Conroe so that would make okay. sense that maybe he jumped into this one but congratulations to Rondale and well, Co anglers Corey. can rise up oh, and, yeah. 100% use well, that money Jay to now get it. it was a two time yes. Co Angler winner yeah agreed just another path to get better and better and learn more and climb up the ladder looking at first and second place here Final day at Sam Rayburn unofficially. Again, Tristan McCormick, lots of lots of momentum. Won the uh, final event over in the Southern Opens, uh, Lake Hartwell earlier. For Keith snagging Combs. a spot in the Classic. Yeah, and for Keith Combs, this is the last chance he'll have. We have four more Classic spots to hand out, other than today. But that is three through the Bass Nation and one through the team championship. Those four spots will be up for grabs there. But one more that Combs would be eligible for, and that is today's competition. And basically, if you're just tuning in and don't know, how do I get in the class? Do I just fish one and win one? No, you have to fish. We have three divisions. We've, we've named them regionally, the Southerns, the Northerns, the Centrals next year, where the emphasis is on all nine in our EQ race. They're not named regionally. It's just division one, one two, two, and three. three. Yeah. As long as you fish, you can get your feet wet and fish a division. And if you fish three events in that division, all three events, and you win one, you make the classic. So that is unchanged. That is unchanged. That has same been as the this same, year. and yeah. that allows you to. And what I think, Tommy, we've talked about this in past opens broadcasts. I think that the new change to where the points emphasis for the elite qualification is strictly for the overall. I feel like that has now made a an extra tournament division almost by. Now you can get out of the college series, or you can go from a local. I like these clouds coming in. I think that and fish one division of the opens. You can fish one division, and that kind of gets your feet wet with the classics still up for grabs. But if you really are committed and you want to be an elite pro and you've already gotten your feet wet, fishing all nine is the route to go, and it gives you nine chances at the classic. It gives you nine chances at, at winning uh, prize money and we have some diverse so. fisheries next year too. Start I love the schedule. In Alabama, Wheeler Lake. Harris Chain, Toledo Bend, you follow in Oklahoma, like the Ozark, you haven't been there in a while, Bugs Island, St. Lawrence, and Watts Bar. I think we have eight states represented for the nine events, which is very cool. And some of these places we've been to before, but just now at a different time period, mm -hmm. which will be a different look for the opens field. And we've mixed in about four or five that haven't had an open or haven't had one yeah, in a long yeah. time. Famous fisheries too. That just, Bugs that Island just worked has, out. Yeah, yeah. that that's, was a mainstay in the 90s yeah. for the top 100s and top 150s. But you fall in Oklahoma will be interesting for sure. Gonna, Both you fall, yeah. Gonna finish up in October on the Harris Chain, which set Florida records Bowl. there. That was where it took the three college. days for the college championship was 80 plus yeah. pounds. 
Just imagine catching 20 pounds a day, Tommy, in the college championship and losing by 20 pounds. That's what happened. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cole well, they Sands. They had like a 36, 7 pound yeah. bag there. Yes. Like that. Cole Sands, one of the champions from that yep. college event, just qualified for the Elite Series yesterday in our overall race. Yep. We'll get to that probably in the last segment. Congratulating those three that did it overall because that is a that is a gauntlet. Oh man. And the central's still up in the air, but it's looking like could be set with Kyle Norsetter being our yeah. third. The only question now is if Logan Latuso falls to below seventh, it would make a way for James Nigmeyer to get in without fishing today. Yeah, Hallman and Nigmeyer are done fishing, their points are set. And for that overall race, we had a couple guys double qualify. So we skip them in the overall point standings and go down to the first non-qualified anglers. Those three, I said I'd wait, but I'll just go ahead and congratulate those guys. Cole Sands, former college champion mm -hmm. from Bryan College in East Tennessee. You've got Third. David Gaston, a very young in his mid-20s from Alabama. He lives in Silicaga, so yeah. he'll be, yeah. Lay Lake will be a close venue for him next year. He's a Coosa River guy and fished plenty of Tennessee River Lakes, fished the, I believe, the Alabama Bass Trail, which is a great team, tra team trail. And then third place for qualifying is John Sokup from Oklahoma. He is a touring pro as well and has been in the hunt all year. He had led the points race for a little while there. So that is our three overall qualifiers. Recent team of the year for the College Series, Logan Parks from Auburn, just barely missing. By, 30 points or so, but the first man out in the overall mm -hmm. race. And you got to give it uh, props up to uh, St. Croix overall opens champion Keith Poche, former lead series angler. Yeah, big comeback on day two yesterday to to lock that up. Things are happening. Things happened. Past tense. Well, Ronnie, when we were starting our program here, before the anglers even took off, we uh, talked about six or seven anglers. Before we talked about Keith Combs, and you said, let's yeah. not bury the lead. <laughs> you had it right. He, that's your lead for today is this day Keith Combs has had. Combs coming into this event. If you see a Texas lake on the schedule and it has big bass in it, Keith Combs is one to watch, but especially this one. He lives not far from the takeoff, Man. not far from where he's actually fishing at on Sam Rayburn. And, mm -hmm. When you get in the final day and you're even seven or eight pounds behind Tommy, it's still a possibility because of the big fish that live here. And he got on a spot this morning, caught numbers, and then making a move, caught two quality fish, this one and one, one prior to this one, that have now put him in the unofficial lead. Now he's on the move looking for those seven, eight, nine pounders. That one of those bites, and the, the victory is going to be his. It says 15, 12 on Bass Track. I think he may be a little skosh higher. Yeah, I think he's got one maybe four and change, I mean one and three and change, and then a couple two and a halves. Only three limits in Kyle Norsetter, who was 10th, needed to jump up one spot to get elite berth, standing in third place right now, almost 12 pounds. fire here right off the bat, I guess. That's why I haven't been able to get them. I've hit it too late every day. So this is where we caught our two. Uh, I had a bite. Dang gum it. This is where we got our two four pounders. Um, that fish had it. I don't know what happened. I uh, feel like he took the tail. Clean me up, man. Dadgum it. That is not okay. Not acceptable behavior right there.
Um, well, before I was so rudely interrupted, I was saying this is a spot we cut our two good ones on. And um, trying to get one more of those quality fish out of here, and then that would give us a bag in the high teens. The bite's getting slow, but I did just have a bite. Just totally missed him. He, he had it. I mean, obviously, that fish had the whole jig in his mouth. If he took the skirt down, he took the... Uh, Unless he just had the back end of it, but I don't, I don't know. But I didn't get no hook in him. That's a main hook in that structure jig. Keith Combs, still out in the lead, looking good right now at this point. But uh, we know what lives here. We know what lives here in the Rayburn Reservoir, and uh, so do the rest of these anglers. So does Keith Combs. So we have undoubtedly got some more fireworks on tap for you. We'll take a break and come right back. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Our anglers have been at it for almost three hours on this final day of the Opens for 2022, the last Central Open event here at Fantastic Rayburn Reservoir in Southeast Texas. And we started our day with uh, Tyler Rivette, I think, gave us our first hookup of the day, but for other otherwise it's been pretty slow for Tyler. They can't all come up and eat it like that. <laughs> A fish. Got him. <laughs> Number dos. Oh, boy. Two-pounder. Rivette is already in the classic. Fishing for fun today was the day one leader. He said yesterday there was a lot more company on the dam than he expected. Only came in with four fish. And it's gotten significantly tougher each day for him. But enough to make it to championship Saturday is what you want no matter where Absolutely. you're at. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a victory in itself for sure. Looks like a victory today for Kyle Norsetter as well. Major, major pressure on his shoulders this morning. And... A couple fish gets him settled, a four pounder. Oh my God. Takes the pressure oh, off. It's a good man. one. It is a good one. Oh. Oh, he's not hooked good. He's not. Coming back here. Yes. It's better. It is better. Called up his 11-3 on day one was 17-11 yesterday. He only started less than a pound back at comb, so if he gets a bag up near there, he could buy for the title. Well, with this one, he's already in. You got this. We'll see what the call looks like third place unofficial like it says there and good enough coal it could move him into second place and Such that goes from 10th place money of $5,600 for 10th place to getting up this second would be 21,000 and he'd make the elite series Oof. so an extra 16 grand that goes to good seed money for the elite series next year to get off to the right start in a uh, nine events against the best in the world like this guy buy some extra worms yeah exactly a couple more 
hotel stays. Yeah. Day two leader Logan Latusa though is in fourth place right now. He's still one bite away from catching Keith Combs. He started seven seven ahead of him. Yeah, it's it's far from settled here on this day. Been a great, great first half of the day for Keith Combs, but he's got another half of the day to deal with and some pretty salty anglers when you look at it. Logan, Logan gets to that twelve pound mark that would make. Combs have to catch 20 pounds, but 12 is a, a long way away with 211 right now. But it is a good sign he did get a second keeper for Logan Latuso. Got about a five pound gap from fourth to fifth. So mm. even though he slid down from first and seventh is kind of the mark for folks just tuning in, Logan Latuso, our day two leader, has to be in the top seven to make the Elite Series for 2023. Do not want to fall to eighth place and drop below that cut line. And so seventh is the mark, and he's got about a Six pound lead on that right now, Such, and he'd love yeah, to stay right there. He's got all afternoon too, though. You know, day one he said he fished grass and it was, yeah, not very good. So he changed up, went deeper, and he had the third biggest bag ever in an opens, thirty one pounds four ounces yesterday. Great stuff. Get on our record there book. As well, I knew that we had had other thirty pound bags. I didn't know that it was top three. I thought it might have been top five or top six, but slipped right in there. He'll be in the record books. Well, the fishing will continue for many more hours here. You can follow all that on Bassmaster.com for sure. It's been a real pleasure, though, to bring you to Bassmaster Live this morning from Rayburn, of all places, here on FS1. Great, great day, and congrats to all these guys who have fought so hard through the year to get to this final day, and many of them have taken advantage. 100% wholeheartedly agree with that, Tommy. It is a gauntlet, 188-plus anglers to make the top 10. It's a feat. To be able to make the elite series from this group of anglers is also a feat. Congratulations to the 12 that will get their bids after today's final weigh-in. Like you said, we'll be able to watch it on Bassmaster.com the rest of the day. We'll end about an hour before weigh-in, so you won't want to miss that. The leaderboard can still change after we go off the air. Oh, yeah, a lot of questions yet to be answered on this day, but uh, the answer is uh, always uh, congrats to the winner, and we will find out who that is later today. Thanks for being with us again on Bassmaster Live. Next time we see you live, we'll have some red fishing for you, and we will meet at that time. See you then. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury. Nitro Boats. And by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here for the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open, the final one of this division and the final one for 2022. We are wrapping up the entire semi-pro circuit for Bassmaster tournaments, which are the Opens. And today, we have familiar na names at the top of the leaderboard. Keith Combs, local pro, Elite Series pro, calls Sam, Ra Sam Rayburn home, and he is at the top of the leaderboard. Meanwhile, Tristan McCormick, our most recent Opens winner, second place right now. The top three suits are all within three pounds, 15 ounces of each other. Kind of a bigger gap from fourth to fifth, but that's the way our leaderboard stands out as we make our midway point of the day. Day two leader, the Logan Latuso. Ronnie, he's within four pounds on three fish. He's only got three fish. He had the big bag yesterday, 31 pounds, four ounces, third all time in Opens history. Started Trying to slow. win this event. Started slow with a 111 this morning and has put two, so two small keepers to add to it to have three keepers so far. So Logan still has two more fish to get his limit. We obviously know his story of starting the week with five pounds and then jumping up with 31, like you said, Such. And that's all you missed? Two, a huge, a huge, huge day for him. But the guy who's having the best final day of anyone is Keith Combs. And going through some of his catches this morning, Combs started out pretty strong. Caught, Fast and furious. Yeah, he was 
caught a couple fish really quick, but a lot of them in that similar range, yeah. two and a half to three pound yeah. fish, solid place keepers. You wouldn't mind weighing them in, but you would love to replace them with some Sam Rayburn Giants. And he kind of worked his way up. They kept getting a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Made a move to a, another spot, one That's that had not that produced right for him at all this yeah. week, other than practice, and he finally got it to pay off two solid bites. This one yeah. being a pretty decent yeah. one for Combs. Yeah. Those two fish helped him get up to near 16 pounds, which is what he's at right now. Nice. But he's on he's on the search for a seven, eight, or nine pounder to really get to a Sam Rayburn. He bag. said he's close. One good bite from the high teens. He's at 15, 12 on Bass Track right now. 45 and change total, three day total, and uh, leading the event by three pounds, five ounces over Tristan McCormick. While we make our fly down the lake to our other competitor who is right there near the top of the leaderboard, Tristan McCormick this morning, kind of doing the same approach that we saw at Lake Hartwell, but with clear water and spotted bass, this is a little different. He's not using a spinning rod, not using a drop shot. He's using a swim bait, also using two different types of spoons. Still seeing his fish on forward facing sonar and it has been able to really capitalize on it. These fish have been feeding on bait fish all week, small ones, but right now his floor is pretty high. He's always gonna get 12 pounds with this pattern, it seems. And how about Kyle Norsetter from 10th place needed to gain one spot to get an elite qualification. What a monumental day for Norsetter is, like you said, started the day in 10th, needed to finish ninth or better to make the Bassmaster Elite Series for next year. And from the looks of it, sitting in third unofficially, he will be a part of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series Rookie of the Year contention. That list, he'll be on the rookie list. And he's kind of doing an approach here at Rayburn a little different than a lot of the top 10 we're seeing. He's fishing shallow, fishing a lot of these grass lines, the backs of these creeks with a chatterbait. He said, I'm from Wisconsin. I don't fish grass lines, I fish weed lines. He said oh, weed oh, lines. Oh, is that what the difference? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But North Setter, determined to make the Elite Series uh, opportunity become a reality for him. He said, I was plan planning on fishing yes. all nine opens if it didn't work out next year. But now it looks like it may work out and he'll fish all nine Elite Series. Got Vincent excited Stead. with his big bass he caught. We, we, we saw he was kind of knowing that I could be in with that, that fish. May put me over the top. He's got almost 13 pounds today. He's jumped from 10th to 3rd. As we look through some of the highlights, this is Cody Bird in 5th place. Started the day in 6th. He's making a farther run than anyone else, and he is punching mats, doing something a little different. That's, what's I, that's what I love about these fall events. Yes, they are do <laughs> or die. Yes, they are very tough at times. The weather's unpredictable, but we get to see a lot of pack, a lot of patterns. Different types play of fish. Out. Yes, we get to see these guys all kind of come to different conclusions, but end up with similar weights. And Cody Bird, a very, very seasoned, and honestly, I'll say it, one of the legendary Texas oh, anglers yeah. has a great reputation across the whole country. Especially we heard other, the state of Texas. other guys say they tried the grass thing and couldn't get it going. This is the guy who tried that on day one, had five pounds to his credit. Logan Latuso, the day two leader, 31 pounds yesterday. Suchi would have made the top 10 if he zeroed on day one with yesterday's weight. That's how big it was. It's kind of hard to stay out here. We got three little keepers, so better than nothing, but we still need two of them big ones. We got time to get it done, though. Since we last saw Latuso's catch of 111 to start his day, he's caught two small keepers. He has three fish for four six, but man, even if he doesn't win this event, Such, those four pounds, six ounces today are huge because he needs to finish above seventh place to make the Bassmaster Elite Series. He came in today with the lead. He could fall six spots and still tie for the last spot and have that tiebreaker advantage over James Nigmeyer. Eighth place or worse. It does not bode well for Logan Latuso. Seventh or better, it's good to go. He seems rather calm and, and confident that he can still get it done. Obviously, he's got plenty of time. You know, if he's shooting for, you know, the 913 he caught yesterday, or the second largest fish, the 911, he doesn't even need that. He just needs a, a limit right now. A couple two pounders would get him right back in the hunt for the title in this event. We always say and a classic berth, of course. We always alone. say those morning, the morning window of bites is often the best on a body of water. But for what he's doing with the brush pile game, 
fishing some offshore stuff. Those fish tend to roam and not congregate on structure as much in the morning. So the afternoon may be better for him with that sun positioning, even though it is deeper and the sun doesn't necessarily beam down on them. He does think it has had an impact on where it puts those fish around these huge brush piles. These aren't just small brush piles. They extend 10 feet up from the bottom. They're halfway up the water column for how deep he's fishing. And so for Logan, the best may be on its way time of day wise, but I will also say this is also going to be the hardest wind of the day is this afternoon. And so it might make it more difficult, like he said, fishing these spots. I wonder if Keith Combs was responsible for putting any brush piles down there here in <laughs> Sam Rayburn, Ronnie. Only on his spots that he likes, you know. No, I'm just kidding. But there is, there's a lot of different, when people are saying, yeah, I'm fishing some, some deep wood, I say, what kind? Because there's standing timber, there's brush piles, uh, there's all kinds of different structures down there. And so it's kind of a different approach if you're fishing one or the other. So for, for Logan and some of these anglers, they're fishing brush piles exclusively. Most of these guys have been saying they're in 20 to 25 feet of water, but they extend up to about 11 or 12 feet. So you can fish mid-depth running baits and come right across the top of those brush piles and, and still be able to catch fish. Some Entice of the, guys the fish to come out there sure. and attack. For sure. Now I wonder if it's off to the side or right above it or... And you wouldn't see some of these brush piles play factor if it wasn't six feet low. If it was full pool, these places would be 31 feet deep. Yeah, you know, no and, rain and, all. And there may not be, they might be on the next brush pile shallower in the, in the 15 to 18 foot range. So kind of was a perfect storm for a lot of these anglers fishing offshore this week. It's been very dry all summer and even into the fall in the lower Midwest region. Uh, we're in pretty extreme drought conditions around here. So they're saying, uh, watch out navigating. It's four feet down low, not that bad hitting, hitting stumps, six feet down, watch out. Be very careful out here on Sam Raven. Especially in the region of the lake that Cody Bird's fishing. Also, you have that mid portion of the lake, the Black Forest area. It's strict net. There's videos on YouTube everywhere that's because it's so known here that, hey, when it's this level, this is how you're going to have to navigate this part of the lake. And a lot of people have put out videos to help others navigate. But yeah, it is uh, being low. Keith Combs said this is the third lowest he's seen it in the last 10 to 15 years. So the other previous, he'd seen it 13, low, 13 feet low one year, 11 feet low, and this year it's six feet low. Very unseasonable. Holmes and Tristan McCormick had a great fast start this morning. McCormick took the lead, his limit fish about a little bit after eight o'clock. The next minute, Combs caught his fish and has held the lead ever since, 8.07. He's upgraded several times, several two pound culls. Those are the kind of culls you want. Combs in a good spot right now with Roughly a four pound, you know, and change fish, a three pound and change fish, and then a couple two and a halfs to three. So he's sitting in a good spot. So it's very interesting though. You think about Sam Rayburn, you think about giant bass, but it can be do or die. This week right now, if Combs were to win with the weight he has, 45 pounds, six ounces, that's barely over the 45 pound mark that Lake Hartwell put out just a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. which is predominantly 
you know, clear water, spotted bass, large mouth. It was won by Tristan McCormick with 15 spotted bass. So 15 spotted bass averaging three pounds each. Was able to win him the open there. Blowing. Cody Bird did not think that the weight yeah, would be like right this. Now. He thought it would be, be way higher. higher. Yeah, he thought the, uh, uh, he said 14 and a half a day, which what he had. He didn't think he was gonna make the cut with oh. that. And he was sixth place. Let's get on for real this time. Keep calm, sounds like he's gonna make a move now. Still some fish here for sure. Yeah, Latusa was starting the day with 37 pounds, one ounce, and Kenta Kamur right behind him, 33.13. You'd figure somewhere closer to 50. Maybe a little bit more if Latusa yeah, got into a couple change, big ones. Yeah, 18 and change was what he was averaging, but we know that that's bloated with a 31 Three fish. and a five, yeah. Well, I'll Three probably try to do brush pile stuff a little longer. I mean, if you get a bite, I know what they are. I mean, I already lost one big one doing it. If it don't work, you know, we'll go down by the dam and throw a drop shot around, catch some keepers, you know. It's kind of what I did yesterday, feel my limit there, you know, call two the first day there, so try this a little longer and see what happens. Is he going for the one big bite right now, Ronnie? It would go a long way. It would definitely give him the confidence to stay doing that, especially as that wind blows and it, and it gets harder to stay on some of these areas, your confidence can can go away. And for him to be able to catch a big one off there, it shows him, you know, hey, I can still do this and grind it out. Hayden, uh, why don't you just tell us about your day so far, maybe your plan today? Well, uh, so far I, I really feel like my swim jig bite is kind of going away from me. Um, the one thing that I've kind of been trying to target its wind, which I got plenty of that right now, but uh, I pretty quick came offshore in the morning and uh, I'm fishing a hydrilla flat. I got one of my keepers off of it pretty early. Uh, my brush piles didn't really produce for me, so I came back here, tried the swim jig just a little bit, and uh, I wasn't getting uh, getting really any bites or, or any big bites on it. I had a couple small ones just slap at it. so. Uh, I picked up a jerk bait. I saw some fish kind of roaming the edge of the grass and uh, tossed it out there, had a little one run up and grab it. So I did that for a second and now I'm, I'm back out here. Uh, the wind's kind of picked up a little bit and it's blowing right into this point. So I'm gonna kind of drift down through here, throw this chatter bait around a little bit more and see if I can get a couple of fire on it. But uh, I'm probably still gonna keep the swim or the swim jig honest. Uh, I just, when we're up shallow, I just, I'm still seeing tons of bait by the grass. So I'm really thinking that it might just be an area thing. Probably if this doesn't work out, I might start running a couple different areas, just seeing if I can get back on that again. But currently I feel pretty good about this. This flat looks really good. I obviously already had a bite on it earlier. So I'm just kind of playing the needle in a haystack game right now. It's a huge flat and I'm seeing if I can kind of hone down it, what area they're setting up in in it. Uh, earlier, I bounced my front graph off the front of my boat and almost lost it, and it quit working on me, so I'm kind of just fan casting out on the, in the middle of this flat. I can't really tell exactly where I'm at on it. I'm just trying to stay right on the edge of the grass and just cast into it and feather this chatterbait through it. But like I said, if this doesn't work out, I'm probably gonna live by the sword and die by the sword and see if I can catch some more on that swim jig. New berries from Jonesboro, Illinois. It's in the southern tip, Ronnie, across from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, kind of close to an hour and a half or so away from Kentucky Lake. I gotcha. So it's much, much more southern, just like you think of Illinois, you think of up north, but Trevor McKinney, also from Illinois, he's more in the southern part of it. And Good piece of ways. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a couple hours. But drastically, drastically different than the city and Great Lakes like we think. It's definitely more, oh, yeah. more rural. Newberry's a traveling nurse as well. He said he was... 
currently living in Georgia. Well, we left the dam, the come over here, made a little run over to see what's going on. Wind's starting to pick up, it's gonna get tougher. And boys that's fishing in brush piles better have caught them early. She's about to blow. I just really wish these fish would sit still. I don't know, we still got a while. Gotta keep moving along. Go back to back, winning in the opens, Ronnie. Went Hartwell, October 8th. That'd be something. When you, go on a, <laughs> when you go on a stretch like that and you get hot, we've seen English triple qualify for classics in seasons, doing, doing very well. We've seen guys win multiple opens in a year because they got hot. Something to be said for time on the water. More days on the water clues you in more on what you need to do. Tristan McCormick, it's working well for him this fall. I think he's gonna name October as his favorite month of the year to Mr. fish. Mr. October. He is knocking it out big time, but still in pursuit of our leader right now, Keith Combs. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at Sam Rayburn Reservoir, one of the most popular fishing lakes in the country. It produces all times of the year. A little tough this week with the ups and downs, but Keith Combs has remained pretty consistent, to be honest. Over the first few days of competition, had 14 pounds and had 15 pounds, and right on par with that today, his best day of the week, almost 16 pounds, and that has him in the top spot by three pounds, five ounces, Such. Still a three to four pound gap from first to fourth, but they're going to have to start to catch him because Combs, I feel, is waiting for an upgrade in the next hour. Or two. Yeah, he had a subpar elite season. Ronnie missed the Classic again, but with a victory here today, he would qualify for the Classic. We take a look at our first and second place anglers. We've covered this extensively. Combs being one of the most popular and honestly, odds on favorites to win an event if you had to pick out of a 188 person field here at Sam Rayburn. Combs would be on your short list of favorites. Meanwhile, Tristan McCormick, the most recent champion on the Bassmaster Open Series at Hartwell just a few weeks ago, looking to go back to back in the opens. You see this from, from Lake Hartwell right there. Green Pond Landing in the background, a great destination. And at Lake Hartwell, it was a different scenario though. Lead wasn't as big over him by first place. I think it was about a four pound lead, but he had a good start to his day. He started the day in second place. When he took the lead mid morning, he kind of kept it for the rest of the day as he grew his weight, grew his weight. He culled out most of his fish late on that day as well. Man, it's odd. He punched his ticket in the opens almost a year to the day after punching it in the classic college classic bracket. It's very cool to see anglers and you know that they're going to be something in the sport of fishing when they qualify multiple pathways to make the classic before they get their footing on the elite series. We saw Matt Robertson do it through the team championship. We saw him do it through the opens as well before making it through the elite points. There's guys like Jesse Wiggins that have done that as well. Plenty of anglers have came through the opens and the college series and have punched their ticket in multiple ways. Now we've got guys like Cole Sands who have made college brackets to qualify for the Elite Series. So many young anglers and talented fishermen coming up these days and Tristan McCormick is on that short list as well because with a couple victories and some good momentum, he is definitely headed in the right direction for 2023 and I believe he said on the phone that he planned to fish all nine opens next year as well to try to get in on the EQ points race. Yeah, that's something I think we're going to get a more well-rounded, somebody who's been through all those different fisheries that are on the schedule next year. Well-rounded angler. And I'll say, for full transparency, because people will fight back on this and it's been a hot topic, 
that is not saying that anglers who qualify through one division, three events are not well rounded, but this will ensure that there are no doubts when you have nine events that are all across the country, you know, within like I think the nine events are represented by eight states next year, different times of the year fishing from February to October. We're not spawn heavy. We're not summer heavy. They're all dispersed through there. Having nine events like that will create a, an angler who knows how to travel that many weeks a year like you do on the Elite Series. They'll know how to fish multiple types of lakes, different times of years, and Wait, survive hold, a gauntlet Now, in the nine season. events, too, you've also heard pros say that you could have a subpar event, and they're easier to throw one away than in a, th a three-event division trying to qualify. You could which fights excel against on your home which your lake point and have though. okay That That fights against your point, though, with well-rounded anglers, because to do it three straight events and not have a slip-up is very impressive. One of the most impressive feats in the sport of fat bass fishing. So I get the but ability to slip up. Have one slip up and but now with it being Couple mandatory minor. and everyone who's fishing all nine is in the running, like the last few years we've had 25, we've had 45, we've had 50, now we have 80 fishing all nine with over 120, 150 okay. possibly doing it. <laughs> It's going to be even harder to slip up. That's what that's what I'm you saying. You won't be able to. The top ten, you're going to have to catch them in all nine, and your slip up has to be just outside check range, maybe a 50th, 60th. That's as low as you'll probably be able to get because there'll be so many more people competing in that now. Because you see it this week, Logan Parks, first man out for the overall race, fourth place of the non-qualified anglers. And he was the first man out, but he missed it by 37 points. So it's not, you missed it by one spot, but you missed it by a lot of points because they start to get weird gaps in the, in the thing. If you finish good at seven of the nine and you have a bomb and you have a mid finish and somebody has six good ones and no bombs, you know, it's, the points start to get real peculiar. Yeah, you think of that. It's a difference between 70th and of check, 40th. Yep. A little bit more. And people will look at their poor performance on Rayburn this week and say, this is why I didn't make the elites, but it could have been 10 points at the James River. It could have been six points at Ross Barnett. And they all add up throughout the year that you need to make sure you fish clean, you do your absolute best and leave nothing on the table. Logan, Logan Latuso said that. The two previous years that he's been the first man out of qualifying for the elites, he can remember a specific fish that would have gotten that him got three or four points, which would have gotten him in the elites. And this week, uh, he may catch the right fish to to kind of correct all those wrongs and, and make it. Well, David Gaston, he started this week in the Central's leading the division with 393 points. Jimmy Washam was 390 right behind him and Todd Reisinger. Yeah, those three flip-flopped big time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Bradley Hallman came up from sixth. Kyle Norsetter was ninth. And like we said, Logan Latusha was 11th. And looks like Hallman, it, no, Hallman is in, and looks like Latusa will hold on and not Eagles fall down North from Center. first to seven, and North Center has moved up. So that's pretty much our where did, three. Where did uh, Gaston, Washam, and Risinger finish in the points for the Centrals? Young, young Eagles. I get him. Gaston's Ooh. sixth. No, that's a. Nope, that's right. Washam is eighth. Sign. We're gonna catch a big bass on our next spot. Twenty-second for Todd ride. Rising. That's crazy that they can. Jimmy Move. and David both had two top tens in the first two Central Opens and had a hefty lead over the rest for for only a two tournament stretch. They had a big lead and they didn't finish in the top five in points. That shows you how you have to catch. You can't have a bad day. Now we heard that from Jason Christian when he was here co-hosting. That uh, it was the scariest Checking thing he's ever done. Out, trying to re-qualify sure. for the for the elites through the open. He doesn't want any tall guys making the elites. He said, <laughs> like this guy. <laughs> he said it's much easier to pull in on short guys and get your way. Than a spot. Basically, he not, also, not word for word. He also had that neat tactic. Pin the chicken for his basketball practice. You didn't hear oh, that. Did yeah, he said yeah, he brought. The, where do you go them. get a chicken for basketball practice and bring it in and he say? He lives in Oklahoma, Sue. Well, are they, they just were, running down every yeah, street near just, your oh, basketball yeah, court? No, yeah, I don't think they're every street. <laughs> yeah, I could probably go ten minutes from here and find some chickens. 
out with Latuso and Northsetter, two anglers like we said today, fishing for the win and also for elite qualification. Northsetter on your right, started the day in 10th, needed to move up and finish ninth or better, just one point to be able to tie James Nigmeyer and he would win the tiebreaker. He has done that so far and he's in third, having a great final day, caught the kicker that he needed. You could see the excitement on his face. Not only was it a good fish, but going to his bottom line to be able to make that, all his goals come true. And for Latuso, he started the day in first, but he needed to finish in the top seven to make the elites. And he is currently fourth with about a seven pound, seven and a quarter lead over seventh place. He's going in to get a limit mode. That's two two pounders, Ronnie. He's right there with Keith Combs. He started seven pounds, seven ounces ahead of Keith Combs. Keith Combs has close to 16 pounds today. And I fully expect Combs to get more than 16 by the time weigh-in comes around. And so Latuso, if he can get to that 12 pound mark to where Combs needs Makes him 19 20. and a half to 20, yeah. yeah, that would be, I would say a goal weight for him. And to see Kenta Kamira, great year, great win at the James River earlier this year, great tournament so far, started the day in second. We have seen our leader and second place fall. We've seen our leader, second and third go to fourth, seventh and eighth right now. So we've seen a flip flop in the standings as well as the points race. Well, is Sam Raber known to be that volatile? I know we had several guys who That's had the fall. big bags, fall didn't have the limits on yeah. the other days. I it's mean, fall fishing. You get in a rotation. You know, you're, there's 188 boats. If you're in the first two flights on day one and the last two flights on day two, you don't necessarily get a, you know, first dibs. Primo some spot. Of your spot. Yeah. People adjust their game plans, and you can have that flip and that flop. I remember Christy talking about that last week about sometimes your boat draw can be very, very important, and or having a longer yes. late afternoon to fish. I think Combs said it today. He said getting a getting a good boat draw allows him to get situated and your plan can go accordingly. Instead of having to go around. backup spot or second or third spot. We're talking about Kenton, we've got a little bit of a view of him, but he's gonna make a move. Now we're back over to Tyler Rovet. What happens you, with these guys, Ronnie? Uh, Kent, I think was 16th in Elite Series AOI. Had a win, double qualified for the Classic, of course. And just something starts clicking. Like Rivette, the year before this one, I mean, he finished you know, well inside the classic cut in the AOI standings. He was the last the man in the classic. The year before the last, that, yeah. yes. All of a sudden, these guys just start getting it. Kenta said, I'm 40, but I listened to the doc talk, doc talk, tried to do what everyone else was doing previous years. Oh. I'm tired of these fish following my bait. <laughs> it's so <laughs> aggravating. I don't think I ever had it this bad before. Had a catching lull here for a little while, Ronnie. Man, they're here. Deeper. Just like, they're like, that far from eating it every time. Gosh, when you even look at Rivet, Ronnie, two fish for four pounds today, he's 12 pounds back of the lead. Three bites for 12 pounds is very doable here on Sam Ray. Well, we are making another pass through all of the brush piles that have produced. We finally got some wind blowing, which is what we needed. I'm pulling up on one Ryan. That looks like there's some good ones on top of it. Let's see what they do. They've been just nipping at the bait all day. Here we go. Oh, come on. They're all behind it. 
eat it. Come on. Golly. So I'm going to make another pass through all of uh, my good brush piles. And if that doesn't work, then it's just too time consuming to go find new ones. I've, I've looked everywhere in this area. And we might have to go flip grass. Come on, biggin. I got one. I don't even think he'll keep. He might. Probably won't. Golly. There was a big one underneath them all, and he spun around like he was going to eat it, and this guy got it. He's probably not going to make it. All right, Cranford with a man. I was tired watching in that one cast how quick he was working that jerk bait. But that's what the one thing the forward facing sonar has taught anglers is you can, you would never in your wildest life throw a jerk bait that fast or unless you that fast. Yes, no, a normally it. That's a big one. Jerk, jerk, there pause, comes. jerk, jerk, pause. And he's working it so fast to get that strike like right now. Foul hooked. You gotta be kidding me. That one got it in the corner of the mouth, and then it, the second hook got his side, so that's why he came in sideways. I thought it was way heavier. But yeah, to see the instantaneous reaction of fish to your bait allows you to change up the cadence like that to something crazy that we wouldn't normally do because you see how they're swimming quicker at it. More fish come out of the brush for it, not just one, multi, and they yeah, get competitive. You see that live on his scope. There's yes. the fish coming up after it, and he's and, talking uh, about it. And I was, I was gonna ask you about the cadence. It seemed a little different. Yes, yeah. And that's strictly a, unless you see them at the boat fighting for it on your normal cast, not much else is going to make you switch up to something like that unless you get that instant feedback of what it's doing. I was going to say, he really measures up. Is he taller than Tristan McCormick? <laughs> he's he's a, tall, he's a tall boy. <laughs> yeah, he's leaning over. To As Austin Cranford bait. tries to catch another one, we're going to catch a quick break, and we'll be back with more Bassmaster Live with the top 10 here at Sam Rayburn, the final day of the Bassmaster Open season. We'll decide a classic berth and more elite spots and clarify all of that picture when we come back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at the serene, the beautiful, wildlife filled Sam Rayburn rest. Are those wild pigs? Oh, it's got a little alligator. It's just Nat Geo right now on Bassmaster Live. Well, he's swimming through the. I would not want to be on a grass stuff. pattern with that thing in my grass mat. Oh, a grebe. Yeah, there you yeah. go, Z. <laughs> Is that a fake one? Has it moved yet? <laughs> They just a, sit there and it's like a flamingo in a yard. But wait for a fish to make, go right below there, and they slam it. And do they make grebe replicas? Oh, another one. There's an alligator. This just makes me. I could watch this forever. Keith Combs was mentioning some immature bald eagles. I don't know if they're just childish or young, but mentioned seeing those earlier as well. Got some turtles. The final day of the season. <laughs> 
We're just enjoying the day, Such. I'm gonna miss this. Let's see. I'm gonna miss all of the lions and tigers and bears with you. As we go up to a beast. Like turkeys when you're talking about me, right? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Keith Combs, Bass Buster Live, our current leader, Sam Rayburn. We're fixing to move. When I get to the next hole. Get some big wildlife in a boat here soon, right? We haven't seen a big catch lately. He's a game changer or two. All right, let's rock and roll. Uh, need a big bite, at least one, probably two. But uh, I mean, sooner or later, I think we keep doing what we're doing. We have a chance to get it. It's uh, yeah, it's tough out here. It's just fishing tough. But you know, I've caught big ones every day. I feel like we got a bonus catching those two good ones right quick this morning. Uh, now we just got to keep grinding. We got the winds, we got the cloud. It's tough conditions to fish in, but this is when the big ones will bite. We'll keep running our stuff and, and uh, just pray we get a big one. This is when the big ones will bite. That's a good omen. This is a good time of the day for sure. We mentioned it. There's always a morning bite about 30 minutes after takeoff this morning. We saw a big flurry of catch oh, for about yeah. 45 straight minutes from everyone in the field for the most part. And then we saw a midday lull and afternoon uptick, hopefully. Man, it's been kind of slow so far. I've been getting about the same amount of bites that I've been getting. They're just not taking it real good. <clears throat> Half the time, I don't even know when they got it and when I do. They let go up before I can get a hook in them. I broke one good one off a while ago. I don't know if I had a bad place in my line or what, but uh, that one would really help. They've got four right now. And that wind's really picked up. It's making it harder to flip. Uh, may have to go to an ounce and a quarter here in a little bit just to get it through. The line catches on the on the mats when you flip in there if you don't have a heavier weight, that wind. And, it's making it difficult, but we're gonna stay after it. Like I said, we have four. That's better than none. I was in the area yesterday, and my best little stretch is a real small stretch, and I broke that one off a while ago. I'm sure it was a good one, but we're gonna stay at it. I got a couple more places we're gonna hit. I think it's out of the might be out of the wind. If we can get over there to it. It seems like it's blowing about 30 already out there. But we're protected here and it's not too bad. It's just, I've beat on this area so hard, it's probably time to make a change if I'm gonna do any good or catch bigger ones, I should say. <clears throat> and that's about it. You never know on this like any flip, but a 10 pounder, so you're always hoping. Pretty calm here, Such, where Cody Bird is punching some grass, but he mentioned having to maybe go up to an ounce and a quarter weight. On some of those places, if you've never pit punched mats or fished thick grass like that, when it's really windy, you know, on the windier side Tightens of where up. he's at, it'll compress that mat together to where now those holes that you see right there's a couple little holes in that grass they don't they're no longer there it's kind of all smushed together and you have to really get through it and so a heavier weight or you're going to have to pitch it higher in the air to, to sky blast through there there's a couple different ways to do it without going up in weight but he's thinking with the with the tenacity of the wind and what it's going to be the rest of the day if he wants to get bites in those areas he's going to have to at least change to that which is not for the faint of heart. That's a that's a big time setup. You're gonna have to have to pitch an ounce and a quarter. And that's the thing for Cody Bird as well. He's got four for seven thirteen. He might be seven and a half pounds back, but that is one swing of the bat here. So his fifth fish, his limit fish, could end up being you know, one of that size and gets him right back in the ball game. Even if it was a four pounder, he would be in second, you know. Oh, well, day one, Kyle Austin had a uh, 7 12 in uh, yesterday, Logan Latusa, a 9 13 and a 9 11. Pretty good bad. for his other, other three to average four pounds, too. Yeah. You had to do some work to get 31 pounds, four ounces. I mean, even you look 
look at Kamara with no fish. He's 11 and a half back. Yeah, league. simple limit. Simple. But limits are hard to come by. There's only three anglers in the field with a limit today, and they are your top three. Combs, McCormick, and Norsetter. You said we had 70 limits on day one out of 188. 29 zeros, though. A couple different reasons that can happen for sure, but yeah. Average fish was like 2.6 day one. 62 limits on day two, a little harder. Two and a half pounds almost was the average. The third biggest bag in Open's history, 31.4. Go from Cody Bird to Tristan McCormick down near the dam. Live. Yeah, I said screw that wind. We come back to the dam. Ain't no sense of fighting it. It's just so hard. You got to make the perfect cast, and it's hard to do that fighting the wind. I know there's a big bag to be caught right here at the dam. We just got to hunker down and do it. He's kind of protected down there. The dam's on the southern end, and the wind is coming from the south. From the south. Yeah, we've seen some weather changes. The last few days, they've been in winter jackets and some bibs because of the cool, cold mornings and things like that. And the evening overnight lows has been very low. But last night, that southern wind started to come in. I know the low in Arkansas was only down to like 55, 60 degrees, and there, a warmer evening. Much more stable conditions for today, blowing in that southern air. Eat it. Mm. Like I said earlier, these fish set up later in the day anyways. He's going to go into Weird Al Yankovic and start singing, eat it, eat it. Cormac had 19 pounds even on day one, 12.9 yesterday, Ronnie. Right now to get near Combs, he'd only need a little more than 14. Tristan said he finally started to see these fish start to group up pretty well. Even though he caught 19 on day one, they weren't grouped up necessarily. And he started to see them grouped up yesterday afternoon, was able to catch them on a spoon to really cull out a lot of his weight that he had. Even though he only had 12 pounds, that could be a very key 12 pounds that could get him a win today because it wasn't a four fish day or a three fish day, things like that. So he was confident coming into the morning with the warmer night and the, how the fish had grouped up that he could catch him. And he did this morning, he put on a show. Had our first limit of the day and I believe and uh, took the early lead.
eat it. Come on. about it for a second but probably not gonna call for him <laughs> about to have a top 10 shoot off here at the dam <laughs> just need one of them old 10 pounders there's first there's the day one leader day two leader you have tristan mccormick who's in second I think that was Hayden Newberry's green power poles coming off pad over there. And then another boat that was fishing that might have been, I couldn't tell quite who it was. So that tells Tristan a couple different things. The fact that Latus was at the dam, yes, he had caught some fish previous days there. Tells him that the brush pile game's probably not going as well. As well Seeing as some had, of the other guys who might have been fishing shallow or fishing different parts of the lake do it. Tells him that as well. So he's probably going to stay oh. here. Latuso's hooked up. So go to the bottom line. This will be number four for him. Yeah, strong one. The way he's acting, it doesn't seem like it's that big, but it's pulling like it's a decent one. Strong little rascal. Number four. That'll um, put him in second place. Four. One more like that, he's leading, Ronnie. Need to get bigger. Pound and three quarter, he's skinny. Hmm. Puts him into second place and I think a little different with Logan. He doesn't have forward facing sonar on his boat. Suchi has Hummingbird 360, um, but he's got the regular, what we used to fish for suspended fish and school and fish, you know, back in the day, 2D and down imaging, stuff like that. He does not Probably have- was bigger than that the way he was pulling. Forward, so. Yeah. I don't think he's quite too, because he's so skinny. Hammersack. <laughs> He's better than his day one weight, Such. I said Hammersack. <laughs> but not as good as his two big fish on day two. Neither of them. Go from 31 to six. But he is within two and a quarter pounds of Keith Combs and the lead. Hey, I'm not going to be wrong now, Such. I need to get rid of that little lime burner in there. Someone said, what's he going to He's had five, 13, and he's had 31, four. What do you think he catches? In between, yeah. yeah. Somewhere oh, in between. Yeah. <laughs> not below or above, huh? Four for, I would love to see him go above 31. I would love to see it on live. I like to see those first two catches yesterday, 9-13 oh, and 9-11, mm. and his reaction. I think Daryl Gleason, Elite Series Pro, dubbed a couple big fish that he's caught at Toledo and Rayburn as ocean ponies, and no doubt two nine-pounders were ocean ponies yesterday. Nice, ocean pony. That's Lee Livesey's baby whales at yeah. Fork. Ocean ponies, huh?
I like that Combs is throwing a crankbait now. He's got the wind blowing. He's been pretty protected for the most part. A little bit on that second spot blowing in towards it, but a little more protected. Taking a look at not far from takeoff towards the dam section where we saw four, maybe five anglers. Maximum depth at Rayburn is around 80 feet. So a lot of this water might be 50 or, or shallower, yeah, 40. Yeah, what's the slope coming down yeah, the dam so if you follow it I mean, down there's there. going to be, if you look at the contour maps that you can you know check out online and stuff, there are plenty of places for fish to, to go out into the abyss or pull up on different structures. They don't have to be just on that wall. And that's what we've kind of noticed. The way Latuso is fishing. Yeah, the contours are pretty, pretty, you know, tight together, but it, it goes, you know, you can get pretty far off the bank and get to 19, 20 feet, which is now going to be in that 13, 14 feet range. So before it drops off into 40 and, and change. a couple key catches. It might not have been the biggest one of the day, Such, but Logan Latuso's fourth keeper of the day puts the day two leader who had a seven pound lead and change over Keith Combs. He is now chasing Combs and is one fish closer to possibly jumping back into the lead. Latuso, just a few pounds off the pace. Combs still in front. We'll be right back at Sam Rayburn. Welcome back to the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open here at Sam Rayburn, Jasper, Texas, Umphrey Pavilion. That's where everything's going down. If you want to see the final way in and you are in South Texas, head over before 315 Central Time, local time to the tournament. That's when they check in. You'll be able to watch it come down to the wire as Keith Combs has a lead. But like we saw in the last mm. break or the last segment, Logan Latuso with a key fourth keeper has put him within two pounds, four ounces of the lead with very minimal weight, Such. And that's what day one, very minimal, today very minimal, but day two is what is carrying him to even being in contention right now. Yeah, Comb started seven pounds, seven ounces behind Logan Latuso. He took a lead. He's got about 16 pounds on the day. Work our way back now. He's lodging me. Combs is going to start running and gunning, hitting some spots on the way back down towards the takeoff. He's up lake a decent bit. Okie doke. He's got plenty of time. Oh, it's going. Just plucking away at them. We got four, four little ones, so I'm trying to get that fifth one, and hopefully a couple of uh, big ones decide to show up. The bite been better afternoon every day, so still got uh, still got hope. These guys don't know where they actually sit in the tournament during the competition days, and I think that he would be surprised that with four fish for six pounds that he is still in the thick of it. 
because that is not what you expect at Sam Rayburn, but... We started the day 3-4 ahead of Kenta Kimura, 5-7 ahead of uh, Hayden Newberry. Tristan McCormick was right there, too. Cranford almost six pounds back. Cody Bird, seven. Keith Combs, seven, seven. We've had another ounce back of him. McCormick. Maybe the afternoon window is starting to open up. I'm gonna check and see if this one calls for McCormick. She doesn't need much to get back into second place. But he's definitely gonna have to have more of a difference maker with five, roughly two pounders in his bag. Two, two and a quarter. quarter. More than likely gonna call. I'm gonna get there slowly. I'll try to get a gauge on what number that is that he's getting rid of. It says a one and a half, so they give him a three quarters of a pound upgrade. That'll still keep him in, mm. still keep him in third, but it'll move him just a quarter of a pound from Logan Latuso, and now we'll have three anglers within two and a half. We had four anglers within four pounds, now we have three within two and a half of Keith Combs. Cody Bird has filled his limit, looks like. I think you're right. Ronnie. I accidentally put the cart before the horse. I just happened to see an update, and I was like, oh, look, he's within six Let's pounds. Let's see it. Here's Cody Bird's fifth keeper from moments ago, punching mats up the lake at Sam Rayburn. In the timber. A little bit of an audio issue there. Type of rods he's using, but they might be messing with the frequency. Number five for Cody Bird. Hey, at least I didn't tell the truck, Such, like, you better go show that. I just was. I take a little rest. In the car before the horse. Came. Only our fourth angler with a limit today, Ronnie. So we have 70 out of 180 on day one, 62 on day two. Back over to Tristan McCormick who just made an upgrade, but still just a little bit behind. Smallest right now is a two pounder. Five ounces I back wish I could get rid of two so in per second. I can't see. Two seven? Mm -hmm. Two and a half pounder. Put him up another half a pound probably, and that'll put him unofficially in second place, I do believe.
just been informed of kind of a developing situation. We've been watching Tristan McCormick and Cody Bird and Logan Latuso catch some fish, make some important upgrades and limit filling for their days. But some of our anglers, Hayden Newberry and his cameraman, Keith Combs said at this time of the year with this water level, it's very scary. And the ability to hit something is very prevalent. It seems as Hayden and oh his cameraman have taken on some water, put a hole in the boat. The best right way. on Sam Rayburn. <laughs> We're almost on them. They're right around the corner. <laughs> Best way to get water out of the boat, Such, is to continue yeah, to run that boat. It. Yep. He's doing exactly everything right. That is not what you want to see. No, sir. I think we're going to make it. Yeah, they're they're not in any they're not out in the middle of the Great Lakes or anything. It is just peculiar and scary. So he, he may spend his day closer to the shore as his boat uh, looks like it was punctured probably by some standing timber. Put a hole in the boat and started to fill up. So he is going to drain that out. And it's good to know that they're safe. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. First and foremost, most important. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Yeah, you want to laugh, but I want to make sure they're okay first. Right. I don't know what speed he might have been running when he hit possibly submerged stump. The next time you complain, Sucha, about a camera being gone from coverage for a while, <laughs> the boat might be filling up with water. That's what happened with Hayden. He was off camera for a little bit. They were trying to take care of some issues, it seems. Glad to see that he's doing all right, but we'll keep an eye on that as they fish continue to fish close was, to shore. He was smiling like <laughs> he had it under control, look like. He said, beautiful day on Lake Sam Rayburn. Vehicles go over Highway 255, Sam Rayburn Parkway there at the dam. Number two and three chasing down Keith Combs. I believe Tristan, when his Bass Track updates, that fish should give him a coal. It's kind of got deterred mentally because of hearing the situation that was developing. But it was a 2.7, and I believe his smallest was a two pounder. That seven ounces should put him in second place and inching closer and closer, basically opening up the possibility, Such, that if they catch just, a just four or five pounder, they're going to be, they're in the ball game in charge then. McCormick just miss. updated 11 pounds, yeah. 11 ounces today, 2-2 two, two back of Combs. We saw that McCormick. at Hartwell, same thing. 
catches an early limit. My buddy and them out there, they had tickets. They were supposed to go, but they decided to stay. They sold their tickets. You saw it at Hartwell catches a small limit, and then every single call in the nice afternoon was just, I mean, it was just a good call, good call, good call. Number five. Probably not. Mm. Mm. Oh, you bitch. Oh. Good thing that wasn't a big one. How's that? that my line broke. Oh. Not a keeper for Latuso, but he's fishing on Championship Saturday. Had to sell his <laughs> tickets to the LSU Ole Miss game today in Baton Rouge. But hey, a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work, I think, Such. I don't know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Newberry, <laughs> thumbs up, he's smiling, okay. and safely back in a creek. We'll be back at Sam Rayburn. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Minn Kota, Powerpole, Skeeter Boats, and by Rapala. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here. The state of Texas, we're going to end our open season here. Legendary Sam Rayburn Reservoir. How many times, Such, have we been here in the past, you said? This is number 35. The first one was in 1968. Bill Dance won it. Really? Bill Dance, a champion the of Sam six. Rayburn. We've had a lot of great champions. Brandon Pollinx won at Sam Rayburn. Masayuki Matsushita, most recent winner in 2020 here. It is definitely a hotbed for the historical aspect of Bass tournaments. It was the sixth ever BASS event held. It was on Ooh. San Raven. Tristan Ooh. McCormick. He definitely has this bite dialed in more than anyone else that's been fishing around the dam. He's now picked up that jigging spoon. Your top three going into the final two hours and 45 minutes of fishing time. Keith Combs. check in central time, right? Yes, 3.15 local time for the 10 anglers to check in at Umphrey Pavilion. And we're only here till two? We're only here till two, so there's we gonna be an hour, of, an hour of possible drama, especially for the guys fishing at the dam. They have all of that allotment of time to take oh. us just over there around the corner.
problems is most certainly in the teeth of the wind. I'm going to pull up wind finder and see the exact direction on what banks are getting hit the hardest by the wind at Rayburn right now. That damn sure is protecting with two solid McCormick though. Easy. Ronnie. And he's coming over it from the south. coming straight from the south, so that entire north bank is unprotected. A little surprised with the lull that Keith Combs has gone through after catching fish on a worm this Are morning. Are you using that seat at all? You don't need it? No, no, I don't. I got two. Huh? I just made a couple upgrades. It sucks because I still have a 113 that's dead. <laughs> so, I don't know. I got like all two and a half pounders. Kind of sucks. I can't get rid of that one. But, you know, that's part of it. Um, I treated her as best as I could. I mean, I probably shouldn't have threw her in a live well, but you just never know. I'm, I don't want to be that guy that throws a keeper back and only weighs in four. So, like I said, I'm going to control what I can control. That's out of my hands. Now we're just going to try to catch like two nine pounders. They're grouping up out here. They're just moving so fast. If I can get my stuff down there when they're right, I can catch one every time, but the problem is they swim so fast, and by the time I throw it, my stuff's sinking down, and they're already 40 feet past it, so. It's like a video game. You just gotta play the arcade. I'm just gonna sit here and do this the rest of the day. I know there's big ones out here. There's way too much bait, way too many fish. To cinch down my daggum hat, dude. It's about to blow off. Ronnie, how's my hair look this morning? <laughs> Still needs a trim. But for long haired fellas, it's not too bad. Kind of looks like some coontail, a little middle foil. What you think, Such? Bear skin hat. <laughs> Which wow. now, real close up, the extreme close up. I'll say this now, looking at Bass Track, we have to interpret it a little differently because Bass Track doesn't account for, hey, I'm skipping over this fish and I'm not calling it, just calls out the smallest one that's next in line to go. So it would have already called out that 113 in our record. So just know his call, he's probably got a little less than 111 or 11, on 11. The penalty. And then he's going to have a four ounce penalty. So yeah, Tristan's probably in third, Logan's in second, but like he said, he just needs at this point. Two nine pounders. Yeah, you got to just get <laughs> two big ones to call out because now he's having to call his fourth biggest fish instead of his, his smallest fish. Yeah, that's a shame when that happens. But that is bass rules. Oh my gosh, come on, go fast. Get ready, boys, get ready. Oh, oh. Gosh, dang. 
Dang it. That was like 50 of them. They're still all over it. Golly. That's what we want right there. So. That's them right there. Good call by cameraman Jake. Yeah. Wiping the She's screen going off. Down straight see. To them. see, there's a problem. They're already moving, so. And that's 34 feet of water. God, look at them feeding. Oh, my goodness. And they're all near the bottom. So he's got to get his bait 34 feet down as quickly oh, as possible. Please. Video game fishing has changed a little bit from Pong, hasn't Gosh, it? Gosh, I'm dude. What's Pong? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think Tristan was around. No? When no. Pong was... Space debuting. Invaders. You see him right there, Jake? Yeah. from Burns, Tennessee, just west of Nashville. Went to Bethel, a little on the other side of Kentucky Lake. Gosh dang it, dude. This is about to drive me up a freaking wall. Wouldn't be that big of an issue if, I, if it would get down there quicker. I mean, heck, dude, they're all at the freaking trolling motors, checking it out. See him? Mm, here we go. There's like a hundred of them right here. Meanwhile, Logan Latuso and the rest of the guys at the dam would love to yeah. dial in exactly that many fish. Latuso just needs one. He's got to go over two and a quarter pound. Probably two and a half might do the trick.
over to Tyler Rivette, just not too far from Tristan McCormick. Not the day he's wanted, but he said he was just ha happy to end the season with a top 10. He led the day one of this tournament. And That's a good one. He's hooked up right now. Felt good. <laughs> Think fast, run fast. I'll take it. I'm a tree. Finally. I think I got sent one of these. Let me, don't, I don't want to push you out. Don't it's in this one. You can leap the frog about three angles with that fish, Ronnie. equates to oh, this thing. chunk of change. Yeah, instead couple, of a couple, couple grand, of almost 7,000. He'll make you know, wow. maybe another $10,000, so a couple another thousand dollars. $10, no, no, up, 10, up to 10,000, yeah. 3,000. I heard you change. were getting an extra $10,000 for working today. R really? Yeah, I'm wow. not paying it out, but I just heard that, oh. so. Hmm. Tyler Rivette trying to make a couple <laughs> extra bucks to end his season on the right note. <laughs> Great year on the Elite Series. If he was to somehow win today, he would help out buddy Hunter Shryock. But we'll be right back. Sam Rayburn. Whoa! Yeah! Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here in the state of Texas to wrap up our 2022 St. Croix Bassmaster Open season. This is the finale, the last one of the nine opens and the last one in the Central Division. It's been a long, long season starting way back earlier this year. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. I'm Ronnie Moore. That's Mike Sukon and Such. We've got a lot of answers to our questions that we've oh, had yeah. all season. Oh, yeah, we do. For the Southern Opens and the Northern Opens, those are done. They were done a few weeks ago, and we have our qualifiers for the Elite Series. In the Northern Division, we have Alex Weatherall, Kioya Fujita, and Keith Poche qualifying from the Northern Opens. In the Southern Opens, we have Bryant Smith from California. We have Cooper Gallant from Canada and Joey Sefuentes crazy. from Arkansas. Place, right up the road from the here. The two things that we were trying to decide this week, we were deciding the overall points race and the Centrals. Centrals. I think after yesterday's competition, the overalls are done but the centrals still to be determined tell me about the overall three we got qualifiers. Cole Sands who was third overall and then David Gaston who was leading this one before this week but he's still overall in there and John Sokup is going to be an elite series angler next year we got Tennessee Alabama and Oklahoma represented there but today we had two anglers of our three possible qualifiers from the central opens division still fishing today and had to get a certain mark done to qualify we had our leader Logan Latuso he was second in points Bradley Hallman already got his job done. He won the Central Opens points. He is back in the Elite Series. Like we said, Logan Latuso was leading. He needed to finish in the top seven of this event to be able to uh, hold his spot. We were worried about it this Third morning. Right now. He had dropped down as far yeah, as fifth, but down. he is up the leaderboard now into the top three safely secured right there. He needs one more for a limit. And then the third place was still up for debate because of Kyle Norsetter was 10th in this event, needed to finish ninth or better. He is currently in our top five as well, and he has secured that. If he was to fall below ninth, though, and finish 10th, it would go back to James Nygmeier. So the last day of the season, we wanted the drama suit, and we have we got done it. it. We got it. It was like the three-card money today of who's going to get in there. Last card up. Take your choice. Northcetter looks like he's done his work, though. He's got the second he biggest bag of the day, 12 15. He had that big fish who's very excited about catching, so he kind of knew right then he might have punched his ticket. And it doesn't matter how you make the Bassmaster Elite Series, it's just the fact if you get it done, yeah, that's the with achievement. That bait, magic worm, just dragging along these rocks. Trying to catch number five. Tough today. I 
sure he has no idea he's only two and a half pounder away from being the titleist in the classic berth. Very shocked that we have not seen a late day call with all the spots he stopped on by Keith Combs Keith right now. Combs. Waiting to see that. And we'll keep an eye on that as we watch Logan Latusso. So, so you're saying he's fishing history? That I'm just thinking what? at some point that? during the day, if Keith Combs he hits 10 spots. He's going to find one, a he's big got one. Yeah. One of those places will have them. And that's what we've seen at Lake Fork when he's kind of gone through a lull and he finally makes a rotation and boom, it pays off. It is rough out there on the offshore spots, especially the, the area of the lake he's fishing in. But as he makes his way back towards Tate, he's got to find a spot that's fired up. There's, there's got to be one. Especially if he's throwing the chartreuse and blue bag crankbait six XD like he is. There he's also go. mixed in some Tennessee shad, but that is his bread and butter. You called it. Saw that this morning with another angler. Yeah, Latuso actually. Uh huh. Looks like he's gonna pick up Tennessee shad. See if he can fool one there as well, but. Combs did his work. Everybody's, everybody normally has a flurry at some point in the day, and his flurry has been the best flurry of the day. And it lasted for over an hour. And he's put in his fishes 15 pounds, 12 ounces on bass track. I think he's pretty close, or maybe half pound to three quarters of a pound under. Yeah, I think, I think if anything, you know, at most. 16 and a half pounds tops, you know, okay. I think, but I think that he's not too far off. I think it's pretty accurate today. Make a move from up the lake with Keith Combs. Haven't had the best service with Trevor McKinney, but the former college classic bracket champion from McKendree University now fishing in the opens, obviously, and he's trying to make it back to the Bassmaster Classic. He fished his only classic in this state over at Ray Roberts in Fort Worth, that area for the 2021 Classic. Would love to make it back. He's made a couple top tens, like Ross Barnett, made one at the Upper Chesapeake. We got to see him on ba Bassmaster Live there. He's saying he was rolling along, doing really well in the standings, and then big hiccup, big bump. One. One thing, if we want to equate it to other sports, I feel like he was a four or five star recruit coming out of high school. Like he was all American. He had done so well. Definitely up there in the recruiting rankings, if you were to have him. Goes to college and produces at a level. Now it's just making it to the pros. And it's just a different, just because you might have shown the talent, you got to put it together in a nine You got to do it at double A and then triple A. Yes. And so he has proved his worth in the high school series. One of the best high school anglers ever. College, you don't. College, he knocked Rarely, it out. what is there now, 12, 12 anglers who have made it to the classic? Yep. Through the college series? Winning the brackets? No easy feat to go head to head for three days and just get in there in the first place. One of the top three teams are the team of the year this year. I like that Lewis Minetti interview you did. That was a good podcast. Yeah. We enjoyed, uh, me and Kyle enjoyed doing that podcast episode. It's going to be a fun off season now that we fired the Bassmaster podcast up, Such, and we'll try to talk to as many of the qualifiers for the Elite Series field next year, talk to some other storylines. We're going to have uh, Mark Zona on next week just to chit chat with Z about ending the year. He said, I really want Keith Combs to be happy on our deer hunt coming up. I don't need oh. him to be. I don't need him to be mad with a gun in his hands, you know, oh, and, and, and wow. deer to be shot. So <laughs> that sounds foreboding. <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough day. I don't know. Uh, just really ran a lot of new water today, trying to catch a big bag, and uh, only got a couple bites, and I've only caught one of them. So yeah, it's been a tough day. I don't know. We were in ninth place today. We didn't have really. Uh, much to lose so i just went out and swung for the fence and uh, struck out today so far but we still got a couple hours left and um, i've come back to an area where i've got several bites over the last week or so 
So hopefully we can get four more bites and, and at least catch a limit in the next two hours. I know uh, the fish ought to be biting. The wind's blowing quite a bit, but uh, this little area is kind of protected from the wind. So um, I'll be in a good area in the next couple hours and have a good chance to catch a couple fish. So hopefully I can get a couple bites and get them in the boat. A question for you, Ronnie, on that. Do you think guys in the final 10 who are in the lower end of it when, like he said, swing for the fence, shoot for catching five big fish from a giant, enormous bag to make up that deficit. You know, some of them, sometimes they'll do it, but other times they'll falter like this and uh, not yeah. catch them at all. But you know, if you start ninth, yeah, you, was you one, have nothing to lose, really. He was one ounce ahead of tenth. One ounce ahead of tenth. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. The opportunity to catch a big bag is here. What his and it's different. There's there's guys who go out and swing for the fence that make a big adjustment when they're on a, a fine pattern. You know, the pattern was doing fine, but they, they need change. they need to change up. For guys like this this week, Trevor's pattern was he, he got on a great crankbait, but he said it's the best practice of his life. Caught ten pounder, eight sevens on crankbaits all around the lake, just fishing offshore. But every day he seemingly has either lost touch with that pattern or it had died. Enough to the point where yesterday in the middle of the day he switched and canned it with one fish and went shallow and filled his limit pretty quickly nice and limit. said, so today I need to, I'm just going to go and fish shallow. And uh, if I need to go fish offshore, I might. But with the wind projections, it might be best for me to fish shallow. So it's different when the people say they're swinging for the fences when their pattern is dying or they didn't have a pattern versus unnecessarily going for it when your pattern's been fine. You might not have to. You could win it with your pattern, but these guys today are definitely, it's been so up and down. They probably, their pattern's dying and they're just doing what they can to try yeah, to hit, get a big He bag. had 13.9 and 15.6 yesterday. He said, if, he said if I got to 15 to 18 pounds, I'd go back offshore because I don't think you can catch 30 up shallow. He said, I don't think you can maybe catch 25 up shallow. But he said, I know I could probably catch 20 pounds doing it. And if I get close to that, then I'll make an adjustment to try to really knock it out. And obviously only one fish today. It hasn't worked out well, but There's, uh, I it's wanted a good to day to do it because you're in the top 10 out of 188 boats. In some other terms, we've had guys who felt they needed to swing for the fence <laughs> and then the fishing that day yeah. ended up they didn't actually need to. They just needed to do what they had been doing, catch that 13, 15 pound back, and they would have won. And that's but what they swung for the fence, not knowing what anybody else has. And honestly, in the opens, we can we can use this as the perfect example. The three opens we've had on Bassmaster Live this year, and we get to see the final day. I don't know if the cameras make them nervous. I don't know if it's the fall that makes it tougher. Oh, we saw Chesapeake <laughs> Bay, we saw Hartwell, and we've seen it today. The day one or the day two leader. No matter how strong of a pattern it is, think about this. Chris Boudry, he was first, had a good lead on day one and two. Or no, he wasn't the leader on day one of Upper Chesapeake. In Chesapeake. He was the leader after day two, had a big lead, faltered. Guys who on did their normal day. pattern, guys who did their normal pattern. JT Tompkins. Normal deal, wins the tournament. Hartwell, Derek Lettinen, pattern faltered enough because they were catching solid weight. He only had, what do you have, 10 or 11 pounds, faltered. Tristan McCormick from second wins, but we had guys like Shane Lineberger, John Garrett get up in the Move top up, five yeah. because they moved. I'm saying in the opens where you feel the less pressure and you can swing are the ones that you don't need to because the leader will probably falter because of the pressure that the lake has gotten and the time of the year. So that's just my two cents on watching it as Tristan McCormick catches another one that probably will not help. I can see, I know you're referencing the 2018 Classic. I can see going for it in the Classic like that where everyone was catching pretty good weight because he's got, you got to catch really great weight. You never expect a guy on Hartwell to not get a limit. Here right, this with week the with the oh two guys gosh. who have led this week haven't had a limit both days. So the ability to fall is there. Doing your normal deer like Combs has had 15 pounds, 15 pounds, and 15 yeah. pounds, and he's there. Just doing a normal pattern. So like I mentioned earlier, slow and steady sometimes wins yep. the race. You don't have to go for the monster bite. The I need an eight pounder plus to win on Rayburn, to win on Fork. Well, that's not a problem to go for that, but don't 
don't completely can what you were doing. When you get a limit to go do that, that's different. But these guys were doing it from the get-go with no limit in the boat, you know. Watch them, Jake. They're about to start feeding. Well, that get your limit mentality. Look at them. Maybe kind of bit McCormick today. fish been caught yet, Ronnie? No. Okay. No. Okay. I think that McCormick or Latusa will get over 45 pounds, which is what Keith Combs has, and they'll either do so and pass him, or Keith, once they get to that mark, will catch one more and go above that. We need to check in on our guys, see if they've put their floaties on and are swimming, or if everything's okay in the boat for Hayden Newberry. Well, guys, uh, I went to switch areas because I was definitely getting the feeling that uh, my areas kind of burn up. And I went to get out, and I kind of underestimated how big Rayburn was going to get today. And we, we made it just out of, the, out of the bay. And the motor got flooded with water, shut down. When it shut down, we took a bunch of water over the back. And the the waves are so huge out there that, I mean, just a few of them, and we already had water at our feet. The bilge pump couldn't hardly keep up with it, so we started heading towards the bank with the trolling motor as quick as we could. And right now, it's, it's still working on it. We had water up to our, almost up to our knees in the bottom of the boat, had it completely flooded. And with that much water in it, just even trolling, we were taking more and more water over the back. Uh, luckily, we got, the, we got the big motor started back up and made it back into a calmer pocket here so we could work on getting the water situation figured out. Uh, I kick all the water out as quick as we could. And it, we've been sitting here for probably, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, steady <laughs> pumping out water. I had water up over my batteries in the back all the way up to the top. So hopefully we'll be able to finish getting this water out of here and then we'll burn it out and, uh, and have a little bit better luck getting out of here the second time. In the meantime, I'm going to do some fishing while this water gets pumped out, and hopefully we'll put another one in the boat before we have to leave here, and then uh, and then we can make it back to weigh in. But it's going to be a rough ride back. The water is getting huge out here with this wind, absolutely huge. Good thing there's no hole in the boat. We <laughs> thought there might have been a hole in the boat. Yeah, no hole in the boat. That is That's good news. Man, I did not know what the update was going to be when we dissolved off the map there, but. Hayden Newberry and his cameraman are safe. He said, for those who don't know, I mean, he came out of a pocket. You take a wave over the front or the back, and it, what it did was it made, you know, his, his motor shut off, and waves started crashing and over, and that's how the boat filled up. And then once he got it fired up, he's just running to drain it out. So no more water coming in, but it's still a task at hand to get all of the water out. Did you bring a bucket today, Such? Yeah, I did. We're good, gonna... good. I'm going to advise the cameramen on big water. Bring your rain gear, bring your camera gear, and bring a bucket just in case. <laughs> Status quo for everybody there. Hayden Newberry hanging tough in eighth place. We see it just a few pounds to go up into the top five. And then right there, the top three are within just two pounds and four ounces. Two and a quarter from first to third. We'll keep an eye on that leaderboard to see if anyone can threaten Keith Combs when we come back. Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is presented by Mossy Oak Fishing. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live, our first, second, and third place. This is the podium right now. Three anglers trying to get it done. Right now, I know somewhere in Tennessee, Hunter Shryock is on the edge of his seat because if Keith Combs wins the Open, he's in the Classic himself. If Tristan McCormick wins the Open, Hunter Shryock gets the bid. If Logan Latuso wins the Open, he will uh, make the Elite Series and the Classic. Logan will make the Elite Series if he finishes third as well. But and it's looking like it'll that. Be, it'll be much cooler, you know. He's got to fall to eighth. 
Eighth to miss is out a, on his elite yeah. invitation. Eighth is a no-no. And he is currently third, so he's... And it's not just the, the gap there. Eighth right now is nine pounds behind him. So he actually right now could have caught zero today and still be, barely been above he that. He doesn't need that kind of negativity, no, right? Hey, I'm just saying. No, it's actually, it's a compliment. He's done so well. One big day. Yeah. One big day. That one big day, though, Such, it would have gotten him into the final day. Wow. Which would have gotten him into that. the Elite Series if he stayed, you know. And it also has kept him inside that top seven. Still sitting there with four fish, though. All right, Ronnie, his one fish, his Phoenix Post Big Bass 913, beat 75 other anglers. <laughs> It also is 913 was barely short of his 513 and 61 is day one and day two weights. Seven fish for 1114 and he had a 913 and a 911. And those two fish. What is that? That about is Charlie Hartley about 196, 19, 19, 19, so minus 55 beat 133 people. There's two biggins. Wow, 34, 31 pounds, four ounces, third in Open's history. Of course, you know that history is, you know, pretty recent. The, the Whitney Stevens big bag was in 2019, Harris Chain, 32.12. Will Evans was a Toho in 2011, 31 pounds, 15 ounces. And so he tops A.J. Slagona's 31-2 from 2015 at Toho. So he's right in the sandwich in the middle and knocks Brian Hudgens 30 pounds, 15 ounces off uh, the top five. Harris change from the top five, yeah. Such, Logan makes, you know, status quo, makes the Elite Series. He would not join his father because his father's formerly on the Elite Series, but it would be a father-son pairing to both fish in the Elite Series. How many, has that ever happened? Not at the same, they're not obviously well, at the same time, but. You know, you get Scott Martin and, but not, yeah. Not, not, not in the elite the, era. The yeah. Hibbins and yeah, what, elite era, elite era, hmm. But he definitely, back in the day, if there was a 1972 elite series, it would he would have been on it, but. And then the classic, Robbie hasn't fished a classic, but Logan, Logan was to win, he would make the classic and maybe one day Robbie does that and father son make the classic. Think on that for the next hour, okay? I think that's happened. <laughs> I think like uh, Bill and Greg Ward in like 75 or 77 made it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Greg Ward was the youngest to make the classic. The only, I don't think the father son, like Guido and Dion, both won classics. Classics, yes. Yeah. I think that is, yeah. And did they overlap fishing time? Were they like in the top 100s together? Mm. For folks at home, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. This is this is getting fed to me in my ear, so I'm just being completely transparent with y'all. I'm genuinely asking these questions. Yeah, Guido's 
classic was James River 88 and Dion's was 97. Imagine they may have overlapped at some point. Crossed paths a little bit in the early 90s. Got some father son beat down there and Logan Latuso and Robbie Latuso. Robbie beat out his son in the, to qualify a few years ago by just a few points. Old dad getting the best of son. But Take that kid. Logan's, <laughs> Logan said, I asked him that on the phone. I said, I know it was difficult, but it's always in, we always say in, in his timing and when it's supposed to be, when it's supposed to happen, it's gonna happen. And for Logan, he said, you know what? I'm glad I didn't make it back then because it would have been fun to fish, but I, I, I'm much more prepared now than I would have been back then. In any sport, when does a, when does a father let his child beat him? When he can, when the kid can beat him. Never. That's when you let him beat you. Never. They ever say who was sinking? <laughs> Dicky? Yeah. Mm. Hayden. Golly. I already clarified, he's no relation to Dickie Newberry. That's scary. We mentioned this earlier just briefly, but with the overall qualifications, we kind of highlighted the three anglers who qualified overall, but they weren't top three necessarily no. because there were some double qualifiers. Keith Poche qualified through the Northern Opens, was the top angler overall after nine Opens, so he will win Falcon Rods Opens uh, Angler of the Year, I believe. Ten grand. Ten grand ten for that. Ten grand. So congratulations Congrats, once Keith. again. Keith, he beat out Cooper Gallant, who qualified through the Southern Opens. He was second overall. He got second overall, and then we had Cole Sands and David Gaston. I think Kenta Kamura was somewhere in there. He was right behind him, and yes, right John in front Sokup. of Right in front of John Sokup, yeah. We had a couple guys who really had good comebacks and attempts. Logan Parks, first man out. Shane Leinberger, second man out. Bradley Hallman was third behind, but he qualified through the Central, so he made it. When you look further down the overall list, John Garrett was 11th former. And, and he had a 150th place finish or something this year. And you see Keith Poche fished all nine and had no worse than 73rd was his lowest finish. Using the little boat. Yep. Former lead Garrett Paquette, 12th. JT Tompkins with the win. JT was narrowly missed out in the Northern Opens for the second year in a row. Hmm. And 
number one and number two, Keith you know, Combs, Tristan so McCormick. Fishing this week, a lot of stuff's just beat. I said earlier, Keith Combs might be riding a little karma from having his uh, Sam Rayburn Slam event and uh, kind of joining in with former lead Jay Yellis' uh, Cast for Kids Foundation. What did you say earlier or the other day? It was like $110,000 they raised? Yeah, for the Cast for Kids. Yeah, you can put on a bunch of uh, tournaments for that. Yeah, uh, Combs had a uh, silent auction and, and had a lot of donations and corporate sponsors and put a big chunk of money. We had the Bass sure. Fishing Hall of Fame banquet just a few weeks ago as well and raised a lot of money for the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame, which has a home right there in Springfield, Missouri at the Wonders of Wildlife. So fishing community has rallied together and they're also doing a lot of auctions for Aaron Martin's family. A lot of jerseys going up and the benefit or the yeah, the benefits go, or they, the payout benefits their family. Been very cool to see this off season. I didn't go, Ronnie, but did you watch the uh, live service for Ray Scott, the speakers and the heartfelt? Yeah, we put that, um, we put that up on the website and YouTube for fans who you know, aren't necessarily privileged enough to be able to get the invite to go to, to that, but they had that service in Montgomery, Alabama, the home of where BASS was, took root. Very well done service, had a lot of legends. You had Bob Bill Dance and started. Bob Cobb and Roland Martin, a lot of those guys spoke. At Johnny Morris. Johnny Morris. Yeah, I wrote a little tidbit after that saying, you can argue all those guys the Johnny Morrises, the, the Roland Martins, Bill Dance. You can make an argument for them to be on the Mount Rushmore of bass fishing, but Ray Scott would be a first name. He gets his own mountain. Up there, yeah. He's well, got yeah, his own, well, he he's got his own, own mountain. mountain. Yeah, yeah, he's got his own mountain. More than likely, yeah. Just for the hat, you know, like, just to put the hat. Wouldn't have the sport we would have probably as quickly as we've had it. Exactly. It might have happened. Somebody might have came along and done it, but it takes, everyone has the bright idea once it's already done. Oh, I would have done this. Oh, yeah, exactly. But yeah. Ray Scott, when nothing was formed, formed it from the dust. So we'll always be thankful for the Bass Boss. No doubt. Yeah, Roland Martin, who went with him and bought bought into his dream was telling me, it may have been 10, 15 years later that would have got started, but Ray really propelled it in those early years. Look at the industry bass fishing has become. <laughs> You know what that music means. We're gonna hit a quick commercial break. We've got about 30 minutes left of live fishing on Bassmaster.com for the final event here at Sam Rayburn. They'll fish for another hour after we're done, but you'll wanna see the last 30 minutes of our live show 
to see if we see some compelling catches from Combs or McCormick. Welcome back. Told you it was going to be a short break. We're right back here with the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open. Sam Rayburn, Jasper, Texas. Final day here. That's our unofficial top 10. Keith Combs, a solid day. Really rock solid and consistent all week. Almost 15 pounds a day average, and that's how he's got to 45-6. Not the best, not the flashiest week for Keith Combs, but it's enough to get him in the top spot right now. Tristan McCormick from fourth place up to second. Logan Latuso, our day two leader, in third place. We'll keep an eye on those three as they're all within two and a half pounds of the overall lead. Meanwhile, we slide back a little bit in the standings. Cody Bird's been holding down the fifth place spot, keeping it warm all day long. Finally got his limit just a little while ago and looking to call. He is way up the lake, only probably has, you know, another 30 minutes of fishing time before he has to come back. He has to go all the way down lake. Cody Bird doing a little different than the rest of the top 10. It's refreshing to see so many different patterns come and combine on the final day and just be within ounces of each other for the most part. Wind is definitely going straight into Keith Combs' area. bigger than he thought. That's a nice call. Three pound fish there. That is the Strike King Tungsten Thunder Cricket. It's a bad dude. He's a bad dude. Yeah. Just goes up shallow, catches a three pounder. Oh, yeah, we got two tags on that one fish. Nice call. Nice call. Hey, Bubba. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Calm yourself. It goes on the bigger side. We'll get rid of three on the bigger side now. Two and a quarter. I think this is what you got to do to catch one late in the day. I fight it because I want to catch a dang nine pounder, but you know, it's just not happening out there. That's a one, that's about a pound cull. And right in here, I caught a one, one pretty close to four. So, just not getting bit out there. And I haven't got, man, I, it's like chasing ghosts. You know, I caught, I caught that 11 and it just keeps me doing it and doing it and doing it. But it, man, he was so random. That's my only late day offshore bite all week. Come shallow and get bit, but I fight it. <laughs> Said that he's been fighting that all week. He made a about a 40 minute decision to fish shallow yesterday, but he call, only caught a couple two, two and a half pounders, but they culled some small ones for him that even got him to today's suit. So even though it's not what he wants to be doing, that is allowing him to stay in the game. And what he doesn't know is that one just 
gave him a little bit more. Made it a little bit harder for oh my gosh. McCormick and Latusa. Latusa still has four fish. He's about three and a quarter back. That's, you know, a third of his big fish from yesterday. Started the day with 29 pounds, 10 ounces, seven pounds, seven ounces back of Logan Latusa, who still only has six pounds, one ounce on Bass Track. He's fallen to third. But it's looking more and more like he will qualify from the Central Opens as a second position to fish the elites next year. He might actually be in third position. Oh. Because I think he has to, Setter, I yeah. think he has to beat North Setter by two or three spots to, to beat him out. That's why there was like four different combinations of who could qualify today. Oh, he started seven back. North Setter started seven back of Latusa. Latusa. Yes, and with North Setter coming from 10th into 4th, yeah. and gained. with Latusa dropping back two Six spots. Six spots, minus two, yeah, yeah. eight. There's your eight right there. There, there it is. See, I always count Latuso being ahead of McCormick with the. Oh, with the, yeah, yeah. with the, his These culling situation. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the thing that'll. If they do tie, Latuso will have the spot because of the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker, which, yeah. is, which is what? What's it got him on? It is the biggest weight <laughs> for full field days for that division. Oh, okay. So day one and day, yeah. so six days of competition, whatever your weight is after those day one and day two of each tournament, that goes towards your tiebreaker. You know, I thought it was biggest bag. Oh, it's, it still goes to Latuso. <laughs> That's incredible. The biggest bag of the event is 10 pounds more than the second biggest bag. Wow. Keith Poche had 21 pounds yesterday. Yeah. Big comeback, too. That's right. We saw two of the, Keith. or we saw the top two biggest bags on day two. They outmatched the 20 pounds, 14 ounces, and 20 pounds, 2 ounces from Rivette and Austin. If it's on the other day, besides those 20 pound bags, they didn't get a limit. Poche didn't have a limit. Latuso did. Bat didn't have a limit. Or, Bat, or Austin. Or Austin. Ah, nutty. Whoa. Damn. That was wild. Well, uh, man, I cycled through everything I got, just about, or at least the stuff that I could get to um, relatively, you know, quickly. I, there's some places I could idle to and go check, but I'm just really trying to get a handle on these late day fish. Um, I've been fighting the shallow bite. I just, but yeah, I'm really becoming to realize that it's, it, the, the deep bite just goes away. It gets very, very tough as the day progresses. In fact, I've only caught one fish, um, one or one or two fish really, in all of my practice that were, in, you know, any kind of substantial fish late in the day offshore. They were really big ones, but I've worked that pattern for three days now, and I haven't got bit really a past say noon. So. Uh, I mean, I haven't caught no giants fishing shallow, but I've caught some fish up to four pounds. Uh, and 
and we just ducked in here to win so bad really it's making it tough for me to even position out there in the ocean so we ducked into here to this creek um, caught a nice three and uh, culled our small fish which was maybe a two and a quarter so I added three quarters of a pound um, I may uh, I may hang with this just had another bite I may hang with this bite a little bit longer just because uh, it, it is working um, and I got you know a couple two and a half pound fish so catching a four pounder will be tremendous as far as an upgrade goes right now and it's so tough out there. I mean, the, the, the wind's blowing 25, 30 miles an hour, so that's hard on Rayburn. Plus, I need to make a real precise cast with my electronics, and I can't do it out there right now. So we picked up the Thunder Cricket, and we'll see what happens. Maybe I get lucky and get a six pounder. I think Combs has gone about it the right way. He fished obviously a lot of high percentage areas, Such that he had confidence in that there were fish, but also possibly big fish. We saw this morning he got off to a great start, caught numbers of fish, had a pretty quick limit right up there with Tristan McCormick as one of the fastest limits of the final day. And those two have been at the top of the leaderboard since then, but for Combs, we talk about, do you swing for the fence? Do you go for it? He was seventh place over seven and a half pounds back but he went and did a pattern. He went and ran his deal on a specific mm. spot, caught a limit, had a, some okay right size, there. nothing giant, yeah. made an adjustment and caught two upgrades right here, two solid fish that really held him at the weight yeah. of, of around 15 yeah. pounds that he had thought. Yeah. I think that is the, the great recipe He's, to winning an event, event compared to trying to go catch five big ones. He was ones. running at me the whole time. You go catch five fish, and then you try to upgrade one by one, and that is exactly what Keith Combs has done, especially with this latest catch. Well, he's had such a flurry in that one spot, Ronnie. He just kept catching them almost cast after cast for a while there. But for him to make an adjustment, he did not want to fish shallow in this event. You can Ooh. see the wind and the waves whoa, whoa. blowing in on this area, but he was able to pick up a strike. That's a nice cricket, call. a bladed jig, and be able to catch a three-plus pounder and make about a three-quarter of a pound, maybe a, a pound upgrade for him. Gives him a little bit more breathing room. It's an extra bite that he was not going to get if he stayed offshore. So for Combs, I feel like he's fished a flawless game plan. He's stuck to his game plan of fishing offshore, but he hasn't died out there. And when it's gotten tough, he's came shallow and caught a fish or two each day that have kind of bridged the gap for him. And hang with you guys for one more segment probably before we call it quits here at Sam Rayburn. There's about an hour left in fishing time and about 30 minutes left of running time for some of these anglers, including Keith Combs. And we'll see if he can extend his lead when we come back. Live coverage of the St. Croix Bassmaster Central Open at Sam Rayburn is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Coming down to the last couple moments of fishing and decision making, these guys who are near the dam will have a lot longer to fish. They're close to Umphrey's Family Pavilion, which is where the final day weigh-in will take place today. It's where our takeoffs have been all week and right around Jasper, Texas. 
region that hosts this week and Keith Combs farthest angler north out of the three that are pictured the three that are in contention but hey Suchi just did his job he just got a call about a three quarter of a pound maybe a pound call for him that call will give him a, an extended lead so when he's running back yes he's giving up fishing time but those guys now have a bigger deficit to make up could that be the winning fish you never know we're going to leave and have an hour left of fishing, Roddy. We will not know till the way until Hank Weldon puts them on the scales. I'll be tuned in watching the top 10 weigh in as well, even after watching them fish all day long and relatively knowing all the info. We still want to see who's going to win this and take home one of the final classic berths given away this season and solidifying the elite points race. Man, there's so much that goes into this, and we don't ever want to underscore the difficulty of being in the top 10 of an open, of competing against the opens is, the elite field is very tough. All of them are professionals. When you get to the opens, it's so tough because there are opens pros who travel the country fishing the semi-pro level. There are local pros, local anglers to that lake that are very skilled. And then there are elite series pros who are doing what Keith Combs is doing, trying to get another shot at making the classic or guys who are trying to stay requalified for the elites or whatever the case may be. But you have, there are some guys who just want to fish as many tournaments as possible. So elite guys will fish multiple divisions of the opens, maybe a single division. But when you combine all of those things in there, you have the best of the best coming up. You have the best at the local lake and you have the best that currently Said fish there were the elite. 70 Texans entered in this event. It is absolutely incredible when you see a top 10 that is doing all kinds of things just to survive and make it to today. So kudos to all of them. You got Combs, you got Tyler Rivet, Kenta Kamura, current elites in our top 10 today. They're yep. way more fished. Yep. I mean, when you think about it, former elites, James Niggemeyer, 12th place, almost qualified for the elites this week. Keith Poche, 15th, a future elite for next year. Bradley Hallman, future elite. Both were past elites as well. Now it's, hell, it'll take us 20 minutes to get over there. Battle into it. By the time you do that, it'll be 205. Won't get to fish it very long before we got to idle out of it. I don't know. <laughs> we got a longer run back today, too. I don't really know. Uh, I mean, it, it'll be calm on that east bank. Or West Bank, I mean. I don't know, maybe I should just mill around back here. I mean, I've caught a four in practice and I caught a three now. I ain't been in that other area in a couple weeks. Ah, who knows? Windy like this, it takes so long getting around. Holmes Ronnie is vying for his ninth classic qualification. The first since 2020, though. Next year, he was first man out. The OI points. What's that? Yeah, this vegetation in this creek's a little bit different than a, a lot of areas. A lot of areas, you just have a real defined edge in about four to six foot. And in here, it's, uh, it's in, in three and four foot, it's clumpy. So you got the big mat, but you got these plumes of hydrilla. You can see these dark spots in the water. Um, and if the wind wasn't blowing so hard, you'd actually see that there's sand spots around them. So it's a ton of ambush points for fish. Um, most areas, it's, it's not like this, unless you're in a, a creek channel. There's not many flats that I've seen that just have this kind of grass on them on Rayburn right now.
And there's monster fish that live back in here. Just talk one into biting. Ronnie's looking back at Keith Combs, AOI finishes. He was in the hunt for many years in a row, starting like in 2013 when he was fifth place, finishing points. Next year, he's sixth place, 14th and second. Then in ninth, he had, he had a great string there. Well, in last three years, though. Really it shows you, yeah. He'll run this long creek, but I feel like it would not be a good idea. I mean, 2020, the last event was Fork in the fall. It was a win and end tournament. Patrick Walters wins it. Keith mm -hmm. Combs was second, mm -hmm. albeit 29 pounds hour. behind, yeah. but he was second. <laughs> he was the first man Texas out there. Big fish the difference in one spot. Shane LeHue, last man in the Classic that year. Keith Combs, first man out this year. Shane LeHue, last man in the Classic. Combs wasn't the first man out, no, but 64. has the opportunity to win and end, barely misses that at the Mississippi River, and then has a chance to win and end today as well. Great storylines this year. <laughs> and the it's, elites it's and all, the Open. I mean, it's right. just, you see guys who know how to catch them. All these guys know how to catch them. And he's hooked up right now. Or he was. What is there other yeah. factors like managing yeah. over three days and then the four-day tournament's even harder? Mentally, you, you can have a tournament where you just lose fish. You could have a season where you just lose all the right fish that you need to land, you lose. It's just, it's incredible. You know, he said he's had a rough go on the Elite Series, but he's won Texas events in Texas in the last couple of years when he's been struggling sure. on the Elites. Yeah. It's not like his fishing has gone away. He can still catch them as he's showing again today in the Mississippi River as well. We have a good bag, really. We just don't have a big one. These guys never think they have enough, right? <laughs> one big bite, take that to way over 20 real quick. I mean, other than the North Setter, the North Setter fish, you know, that four plus yeah. pounder? Nice. I nice, mean, nice Combs one. has three of the Yes. Five biggest fish caught today. Three of the four biggest fish caught today. Tristan McCormick with a non-helper. He's by far caught the most fish today. Think there's any bass sitting right there? Think there's any bass sitting right there? See it? Yep. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah. See much of Kinta Kamir today. Started the day in second place. Really, some good momentum. Not the day that he probably wanted to end his season on, but there you go. There's a day to have a tough day. It's today, Kinta Kamira. Maybe. I don't know. He's even key. Maybe a 14 incher. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. He was just right under the sofa. He said, "Drop them." I don't. Think so. He doesn't have a keeper yet, right? 
too many. Dude. Makes no sense. Ooh. Close. Close. Fan the tail, don't pinch the tail. He touched the line. Nope, don't even try. Oh. <laughs> well. Saw Kenta Kamira have a great season, but we got to see him really outlast the pack He's there at the Harris here. Chain in that in that area, you know, around Banana Banana Island. He was one of the guys <laughs> on camera yeah. there. Pickwick, we saw a top ten out of him. I mean, honestly, he catches a two and a half pounder. He goes up from ninth to sixth with just one fish today. Oh, come on, you're all over. Not the one that McCormick needs. about Kim Kimura, he's ninth, but uh, he started second. He's only 12 pounds, nine ounces out of the lead with no fish. See, I was just saying he if needs he a two and a half to move up some flurry, spots. Ryan. Yeah, but 12 pounds when you've gone no. seven hours with nothing, that's a tall task. You just we need to start yes, with one. Tall. We need to start with one, then we'll go to two, and then you can start to get greedy. Start dreaming. For it's folks just tuning stage. in, for Tristan McCormick as well, not reflected on Bash Track, is the fact that he told us he will have a penalty today uh, for a uh, fish health violation. You know, he's got one that and he was unsure fish, about too. it. Yeah, and it was his smallest fish of the day so far at mm. 113. Um, it was, I guess, hooked in a bad spot, and he didn't. He was taking care of it as best as he could, but it ended up, it ended up passing away on him. So he will have a four ounce penalty and he cannot cull that fish. So yes, he may have a small one in his live well, but he has to cull fish number four, which is a closer to a two pounder than a 113. He's gonna have to cull his, cull his way up and that's why he needs, of anyone in this field right now other than Logan Latuso, he needs a three pounder or four pounder in a big way to make a dent because he's not just culling his smallest. So we'll keep an eye on that when it comes to the final weigh in and if he ends up making some coals, but just losing by a few ounces, that may be uh, the difference today. But nonetheless, Tristan McCormick fished a flawless event this week. A heck of a year. I think he fished, I think he missed one open. He fished eight of them, and then the overall, he was still in the top 25 in the overall with one less tournament than everyone else around him. Helps when you win one of them, but he did have a, a pretty good season for his first year fishing the Opens. We'll see him at the Classic again. That automatic berth, which he could double qualify if he were to make that comeback. But right uh, now, Keith gonna, Combs is looking like he could get a Classic berth. McCormick is gonna be so excited to walk across the stage in Knoxville. He's a big Rocky Top fan, like a lot of the crazy Tennessee folks are. They're, they're on that high, like you said, of beating Alabama, throwing the goalposts in the water, all that stuff. He'll be so excited to be in Knoxville that week for the Bassmaster Classic and competing in that. I think we need to challenge. If one of these Tennessee anglers that's a Vol fan wins the Classic, they need to go do a cannonball out in the Tennessee River. We're not, we don't have any goalposts to throw in there. We need to throw you in the water. Him or me? Do. Are you looking no, at me when you say no, that? No, no, no. Whoever wins, they have to go take a cannonball. Yeah. Yeah, we have record crowds there. We're gonna top that again. Got to retake it over Hartwell. Got to retake it over Lake Hartwell. They got the facility, and then the launch facility there is very interesting there at, at Knoxville, Tennessee River. A lot of places to hang out and watch. That was really cool. You can go the waterfront. There. That's one thing that's special about that. Without a bunch of driving. You can go to the takeoff, the weigh-ins, and the convention center and hang around the hotel, not far from all of that in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the winner's and trying to get there. Just 
Keith Combs wouldn't mind. I don't know. Oh, could, we, could, could we convince a South Texas guy to wear some orange? If that meant Can't we'd man. give him a classic Ooh. berth? I don't know. Whoa. We'll see about that. Maybe he'll try to make it some burnt orange. Maybe yeah, maybe like different, Texas. Different yeah, shade a of different orange. UT. Different UT. They do it. It's been fun at Sam Rayburn. A little tough today for some of the top 10, but we've seen some crazy storylines, not only in the points race, in the standings this week. We've seen a lot of different types of fishing. The strategies involved to get it done at Sam Rayburn have been diverse this week. We've seen a couple familiar names, some guys with some giant fish, 31 pounds for we got that big one, babe. Logan Latuso yesterday. We see Kyle Norsetter. Weight of the world on his sh mm. shoulders, getting it done for an elite berth. Same with Latuso. Keith Combs, a guy with a, a whole season's worth of pressure on him to win and make the classic. Looks like he is in the driver's seat to do that. They have one more hour of fishing. Make sure you check out the weigh-in a little bit later today. They're going to check in around 3 p 3.15 Central, 4.15 Eastern. We will watch the weigh-in on Bassmaster.com. Next time we see you, it'll be Redfish Cup in two weeks.